Alleluia. Alleluia. We gave you a short notice. Tuluapatia uduru mfupi. Alleluia. Alleluia. Just forgive us for that. Tusame tu kwa hiyo. It is not our plan. Sio mipango yetu. To always give you short notice. Kwa kila mara kuwapatia ile ilani ya ufupi. Alleluia. Alleluia. We just sent out messages I think on Friday. Tulituma tu jumbe ya Ijuma. And here you are. Na hapa uko. So let us clap to the Lord for yourself. Kwa sababu acha tupigie Bwana makofi kwa sababu yako. We're coming at a short notice. Kwa kuja kwa sababu ya ilani mfupi. Alleluia. Alleluia. I may not know much. Siwezi jua mengi. But what I know. Lakini kila ambacho najua. Is that the diary of Pastor Moses Kahuria. Kwamba ile Sajara ya mchungaji kahuria is very tight. Ni imesongamana sana. Hallelujah. Very Hallelujah. tight. Imesongamana sana. So clap to Jesus. Kwa hiyo pigia Yesu makofi. That is here today. Kwamba yuko hapa leo. So I want to thank God so much. Nataka kushukuru Mungu sana. I want to thank the senior deputy archbishop. Nataka kushukuru naibu askofu mwandamizi. The efforts that she has put in. Kwa ile nguvu ambayo ameweka sana. Pastor Moses may be here today. Kwamba mchungaji Moses akuwe hapa leo. So thank you very much. Kwa hiyo asante sana. My name is Dan Kanotieno. Jina langu ni Dan Kanotieno. The overseer of Kakamega region. Mwangalizi wa maeneo ya Kakamega. Our host overseer is overseer Protas. You already spoke here. You know mchunga mwangalizi wetu mwenyeji ni Protas amenena hapa. So I want us to celebrate Jesus. Kwa sababu nataka tusherekee Yesu. As we welcome our beloved senior deputy archbishop. Tunapomkaribisha na ipo askofu na vigelegele na sherehe na vifijo na nderemo na shukrani. Na furaha haleluya. Karibu sana sina deputy archbishop. You can do better than that. Unaweza fanya bora kuliko hivyo. Father in the name of Jesus. Baba katika jina kuu la Yesu. I want to thank you King of Glory. Nataka nikushukuru mfalme wa utukufu. I want to exalt your holy name. Nataka kulikweza jina lako takatifu. Thank you for enabling us to be here today. Asante sana kwa kuturuhusu kuwa hapa siku ya leo. Thank you for bringing Pastor Moses Kahuria safely. Asante sana kwa kumleta mchungaji Moses Kahuria kwa salama. Thank you for bringing each one of us. Asante sana kwa kuleta kila mmoja wetu. Thank you for this day my father. Asante sana kwa ajili ya siku hii baba yangu. Thank you because we can breathe in and out. Father in the name of Jesus. Baba katika jina kuu la Yesu. You are our God. Wewe ndiwe Mungu wetu. Thank you for the unconditional love. Asante sana kwa upendo usiokuwa na masharti. That you can send one. Na kwamba unaweza mtuma mmoja. To come and warn us. Aje atupatie maonyo. To come and help us. Aje atusaidie. When we were just continuing with life thinking it is okay. Wakati tulikuwa tunaendelea tuna maisha tukifikiria kwamba ni sawa. You have told them to told him to come and help us. I say thank you my father. asante baba yangu. Thank you my lord. Asante bwana wangu. Thank you for all the overseers. Asante sana kwa waangalizi wote. From the smaller region of Kakamega. Kutoka kwa eneo ndogo ya Kakamega. And I pray that you help each one of us. Na naomba kwamba usaidie kila mmoja wetu. All the pastors and all the sheep. Wachungaji wote na hata kondoo wote. In the mighty name of Jesus. Katika jina kuu la Yesu. Thank you my father. Asante baba yangu. Open our hearts and our ears. Kwa moyo yetu na hata masikio yetu. Open our hearts and our ears. Fungua mioyo yetu na masikio yetu. And even our eyes. Na hata macho yetu. And we may see. Na kwamba tuone. We may hear. Tupate kusikia. We may understand. Tupate kufahamu. In the mighty name of Jesus. Katika jina kuu la Yesu. Amen. Amen. Uh, we can get seated. Tunaweza keti. I want to thank the Lord so much. Nataka nishukuru Bwana sana. Uh, and I want to thank each one of you. Na nataka kushukuru kila mmoja wenu. And more so thank the mightiest mightiest prophet of the Lord. Asa sana kushukuru manabii wakuu wakuu sana wa Bwana. coming to us. Kwa kutujia sisi. It is because of them that there is this testimony. Ni kwa sababu ya wao ya kwamba tunao ushuhuda huu. Uh, this testimony will teach you a role that you don't you have never known that has the two tremendous prophets I want to take this opportunity and welcome Pastor Moses and your colleague 
Nataka nichukue fursa hii kukaribisha mchungaji Moses na hata rafiki yako. And I know the Lord will help us. Anajua Bwana atatusaidia. Karibu sana Kakamega. Karibu sana Kakamega. Together with us we are other regions of Kakamega listening to us. Pamoja nasi tunaye maeneo mengine ya Kakamega ambaye anatusikiza. Actually we have 14 bishops seated like this. Hakika, listening to this. We saw that it will be too much for them to come from far. Hakika tunao Masukofu 14 ambao wameketi wanasikiza hii tuliona kwamba ingekuwa ya gharama kubwa sana kwa wao They also kujata. have joint services. Hata nao wanadha ibada za pamoja. From there is a bishop feather of Likuyani and the entire team. Kunaye askofu fedha kutoka Likuyani na kikundi kizima. We have Bishop Roslyn, Lovisa, Lugari and the team. Askofu Lovisa huko Lugari. And then we have Bishop you know J- J- Johnson uh, Uh, etale from matete kunae askofu etale kutoka matete and then we have malava na pia tuko na malava then we have west kenya kuna west kenya we have navaholo navaholo we have makunga Maku- we have m- matungu sore matungu matungu ameketi then we have uh, koyonzo kuna koyonzo mumiasi west mumiasi west mumiasi east mumiasi ya mashariki kwisero kwisero butere butere ikolomani ikolomani and shinyalo na shinyalo somebody clap to the lord mtupigie bwana makofi so i believe na hivyo naamini that you who is here ya kwamba wewe ambaye uko hapa the lord is also going to help you bwana anaenda pia kukusaidia in the mighty name of jesus katika jina kuu la yesu and so i know this is a instruction from the lord na najua hii ni maagizo kutoka kwa mabwana and also know that we gave you very short notice najua pia kwamba tuliwapatia ilani ya ufupi but we been announcing we announce sometimes back that just be ready we will just summon you to come lakini tulikuwa tumetangaza wakati mwingine hapo awali ya kwamba kuwa tu tayari uende tutakutangazia uje because every region is asking for this testimony ya kwa sababu kila eneo linaulizia huu ushuhuda And I know that this is a command from the Lord. Anajua kwamba hii ni amri kutoka kwa Mabwana. Know that you are here not by mistake, not at kila saa wanatuita ita no. The Lord have said you be informed. Sio kwamba uko hapa labda kwa kimakosa lakini hapana Bwana amesema kwamba mpate kujulishwa. So today we are fulfilling what we are supposed to have done. Na hivyo leo tunatimiliza kile ambacho tulifaa tuwe tumefanya. Because obedience is better than sacrifice. Kwa sababu kutii ni bora kuliko kutoa dhabihu. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter number 15. Katika kitabu cha Samueli wa kwanza mlango wa 15. Verse 22. Mustari wa 22. Can you read in the name of Jesus? Samueli wa kwanza 15. 22 Lakini Samueli akajibu Je, Bwana anafurahia sadaka za kuteketezwa na dhabihu kama vile nitarudia Lakini Samueli akajibu Je, Bwana anafurahia sadaka za kuteketezwa na dhabihu kama vile kuitii sauti ya Bwana kutini bora kuliko dhabihu na kwa kusikia ni bora kuliko mafuta ya kondoo dume. 23:23 Kwa maana kuasi ni kama dhambi ya uaguzi na ukaidi ni kama uovu wa kuabudu sanamu kwa sababu umelikataa neno la Bwana naye amekukataa wewe kuendelea kuwa mfalme. The Lord will help us because I'm not the speak of today and today we are just going to listen to the testimony and there in you will receive your teaching bwana anaenda kutusaidia kwa sababu mimi sio mnenaji wa siku ya leo kuna yeye mnenaji wa siku ya leo naenda tukusikiza ushuhuda na kupitia kwa huo ushuhuda utapata mafundisho this is very key for your own benefit hii ni nyeti sana ni kwa ajili ya uzuri wako na faida zako maybe you thought it's just like this other uh, testimonies labda ulifikiria kwamba au ulifikiria kwamba ni kama tu shuhuda zingine and to you it is not a big issue lakini ati kwako wewe si jambo kubwa so you can even pick your bag and start going na hivyo basi hata unaweza chukua begi lako na uanze kwenda enda tu enda tu ambie jirani go wewe enda tu mimi sitaenda enda tu mimi sitaenda So I want to thank the Lord so much. For uh, Pastor Moses. Kwa mchungaji Moses. And uh, Ian. Na Ian. I will first of all give Ian an opportunity to greet us then you you come you go. Mwanzo kabisa nitapatia mchungaji Ian kipasa sauti atusalamie na kisha mchungaji Moses utaendelea. So you know, uh, 
Actually, we talk and I'm told you are also no, no, no joke. You might forget him, isn't it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many are happy to be in the house of the Lord today? Je, ni wangapi wanafurahi kuwa katika nyumba ya Bwana leo? I'm also happy to be here today. Pia nami nimefurahi kuwa mahali hapa leo. To have accompanied Pastor Moses Kahuria today to Kakamega main altar. Kuweza kuja pamoja naye mchungaji Moses Kahuria katika madhabahu makuu ya Kakamega. It is a very very big privilege ni tunuku kubwa kubwa sana to even have a on somebody who was dead kukuja na mtu hata ambaye alikuwa amekufa but now he is walking lakini sasa yeye anatembea yeye yu hai hallelujah hallelujah and he has come to tell the people of Kakamega naye amekuja kuambia watu wa Kakamega this is the time ya kwamba haya ndio majira for you to be obedient kwako wewe kuwa mtiifu and fully hearken to what the two mightiest 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 prophets of the Lord are telling us at this particular time na kuweza kunyenyekea na kusikiliza manabii wakuu wakuu wa Bwana ambao wanatuambia kwa wakati hizi yes allow me to read one scripture niruhusuni tu nisome andiko moja from the book of psalm kutoka kitabu cha zaburi chapter 118 Zaburi 115 kuanzia mstari wa 15 The word of God says Biblia inasema The voice of rejoicing and salvation sauti za shangwe na ushindi is in the tent of the righteous zinavuma hemani mwa wenye haki The right hand of the Lord does valiantly mkono wa kuume wa Bwana umetenda mambo makuu The right hand of the Lord is exalted mkono mkuu wa Bwana umeinuliwa juu The right hand of the Lord does valiantly mkono wa kuume wa Bwana umetenda mambo makuu Mstari wa 17 says na saba wasema sitakufa but live bali nitaishi nami nitatangaza yale bwana aliyoyatenda haleluya tumewashuhudia viwete wakiamka na kutembea kutoka kwa tangazo ya manabii wakuu wa bwana na miujiza mengi sana ya kitendeka tukitazama kama watu and today beloved people of kakamega na leo watu wapendo wa kakamega tunayo ushuhuda wa kweli wa mchungaji moses kauria na ndipo nawauliza are you going to obey whatever he's saying today je waenda kutii yale ambaye anaenda kusema leo and change your ways and prepare honestly for the coming of the messiah na kubadilisha maen matendo yako na kujiandaa kwa ajili ya kuja kwa Mesia. Are you going to continue with your normal life? Ama wewe waenda kuendelea na maisha yako ya kawaida. May the Lord bless you. My name is Pastor Ian Atai from Joro. Wacha Bwana akaeze kuwabariki. Majina yangu ni mchungaji Ian kutoka madhabahu ya Njoro. Oh
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Kaka Mega. Leo tuko ingo. Wanaita ingo. Leo tuko ingo. We are so blessed to be here. And before you sit down, Before I share the testimony, Just allow me to make you there's a song that says, I will never be the same. The prayer you are making to God. I will never be the same. never remain the same. I can talk and talk and talk. But if you cannot tell the Lord to reveal it to you, be sure you will remain the same. But if the Lord intervenes and open your ears and heart, I am sure of this. You will never be the same. 
I want to decrease in this place so that the Lord may be exalted. Because it is a privilege, not a right that I am alive today. So I will never be the same. That is the prayer I want you to make to the Lord. I tell him, please, when it is going to come form, let me not remain the same. I will never be the same. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Let us pray now. Father, in the mighty and everlasting name of our Lord Jesus Christ, look this morning we've gathered here in this beautiful altar of Kakamega main Lord not forgetting that there are others who are tuning live from different regions Yahweh. Look, behold, my father, I'm just a vessel. But you are the one who will speak through me, Yahweh. If I tell these people my story, can I I cannot even take one hour. Because I have nothing to tell them at all. But I'm sure if you speak to them, you will get a perfect bride from Kakamega greater region. Father, today I pray that you're going to arrest their hearts. You're going to arrest their ears, even their attentiveness, my father. But the prayers we've made today through that song that will never be the same again shall not go down empty but it shall be a fruit and from today our salvation will change in the mighty and precious name of Jesus now we will come your Holy Spirit to take over from beginning to the end and at the end of it Lord glory and honor shall return to you in the mighty name of Jesus this we have prayed trusting and believing and somebody is saying a big amen hallelujah Nataka sasa to sit I want us to sit eh, I want us to sit and the time is far much spent I want to reiterate what Vasya said kila saa tunalia muda the time is far much spent I'm so cautious when it comes to time and so I'll go direct to the testimony but just allow me to nipeane salamu mbili tatu nimetumwa ni wasalimie kutoka njoro zipo keni Yes, and uh, I also want to recognize that I have friends here. I have some friends. We Hapa met with the overseer there. Kwa gari, hata hakuwa, nikuwa nangoja gari, haku nijua, na misi kumjua. We started talking, we became friends. Leo na muona hapa. Hmm. So I have a friend. Niko overseer wa kakamega is A. Kuna mwingine huyo mfupi ameambiwa asalimie watu anaitwa Dagra Shikuku. Eh, he's also my friend. Pia yeye ni rafiki yangu. So Kakamega is home. Kwa hivyo Kakamega ni nyumbani. Where I have friends I call that place home. Mahali na marafiki naita mahali hapo nyumbani. And of course I have my mom here. Na bila shaka pia ninaye mamangu hapa. Na muona kwa umbali. Huwa namuona tu kwa umbali. Sasa leo nimemuona karibu. Lakini sasa leo nimemuona karibu. 
Senior Deputy Archbishop Mama Janet Swaka. Naibu Mwaskofu Mkuu Mwandamizi Mama Janet Swaka. And I'm so honored because uh, I have met all of you. Actually, you are the guests of honor. Mimi nimetunukiwa tu kusimama mbele yenu. Kuna kitu inaitwa first among the equal. Nimetunukiwa tu kusimama mbele yenu but you are the guests of honor. Tujipigie makofi. Mimi nimetunukiwa tu kusimama mbele yenu lakini yeye ndio wageni wa heshima. Amen. Sasa after saying that I have also a mom from National Youth Service ni officer aliniambia atakuwa hapa. Madam Lucy, where is Madam Lucy? Uh, we have kutuko na askari hapa. Where is she? She's not in. Eh, hey, I was expecting an officer aliniambia atakuwa hapa. Ulinzi ingekuwa tight but anyway it is well. Uh, so kwa hivyo uh, my name's I'm Pastor Moses Kahuria. Nimeanza maneno mingi. Majina yake ni mchungaji Moses Kahuria. Lakini ingo nasikia lazima utume salamu kwanza usalimiwe wawili watatu. So ningeanza bila kusema hiyo ningekuwa nimekosea. So my names Majina yake is Pastor Moses Kahuria. Ni mchungaji Moses Kahuria. By the grace of the Lord I'm a pastor. Kwa neema ya Mungu mimi ni mchungaji. Yeah it is not by works sio kwa matendo or the theologies of men wala theologia za wanadamu but by the grace of god i am a pastor lakini kwa neema ya mungu tu mimi ni mchungaji i'm turning one month older since nikuwe pastor sasa ile vizuri sasa sasa ni muda wa mwezi mmoja tangia nikuwe mchungaji vizuri so you who is seated there kwa hivyo wewe ambao umeketi hapo and you want to serve the lord and i'm thinking nitaanza aje na unataka mtumikie bwana na unashanga nitaanza vipi look at this boy here angalia huyu kijana hapa na usijue ako one month older na ujue yeye ako na umri wa mwezi mmoja tu so it is never too late kwa hivyo haijachelewa kabisa so i received the lord in the year na ingiaga hivyo tunaanzaga hivyo sasa tusimwagi tunaanza we start like that so i received the lord in the year 2012 nilimpokea bwana mwaka 2012 that time i was in form 2 wakati huo nilikuwa katika kidato cha pili i know i look younger than my age najua naonekana mchanga kushinda umri wangu but i'm old kidogo lakini mimi na umri kiasi so i was in form 2 nilikuwa katika kidato cha pili when i received the lord wakati nilipompokea bwana and now na sasa as you sure kama kawaida when you receive the lord ukiwa mdogo kumpokea bwana ukiwa mdogo you become so zealous so unakuwa mwenye ari sana at first everybody was fired kila mtu anakuambiaga kitambo tulikuwa tunafanya hivi kwanza kila mara kila mtu anakuambia kitambo tulikuwa tukifanya hivi i wish you listen to the stories of those people waliingia huduma ikianza they will tell you things utaona wewe ni kweli hakuna kitu umefanya Laitu ungesikiza hadithi za kwanza za wale watu walioongea huduma mara ya kwanza ukisikiza utaona kwamba hujafanya so, chochote usually at first i was so zealous kwa kawaida kwanza hapo mwanzo nilikuwa na ari zaidi in the church kanisani i was alternating all, in almost every department nilikuwa nikishughulika katika karibu kila idara translation ukalimani worship ibada keyboardist ucheza vinanda decoration ukienda tuko hapo kwenda pia kwa almost kwa everything kwa karibu kila kitu because of the zeal kwa sababu ya ari now i finish school sasa nikamaliza shule it's a long story but i'm cutting it short hiyo shule ustake nilikuwa nimeokoka but i finish school nikamaliza shule and when i finish school na nilipomaliza shule in where i come from mahali ninapotoka if you don't get a grade that takes you direct to university ikiwa hautapata alama ambayo itakupeleka moja kwa moja kwa chuo kikuu mzazi hajui kitu inaitwa scoop siju na unaingia tech niko no mzazi hajui mambo ya kukunipia mwenyewe siju utaingia all correct there is nothing like that hapana hakuna kitu kama hicho whether if you didn't get a grade that takes you to university direct ikiwa hautapata alama ambayo itakupeleka kwa chuo kikuu moja kwa moja anything below you are failed chochote chini ya hiyo basi umeanguka so i failed kwa hivyo mimi nilianguka according to my parents kulingana na mzazi wangu i failed nilianguka mtihani but not zile grade mbaya mbaya nilikuwa kuna kitu inaitwa average grade eh? nilipata tu alama ya wastani actually if i got somebody ningeenda mahali but i got sitaisema but i got that grade kama ningelipata mtu wa kunilipia ningeenda mahali lakini nilipata alama hiyo and now i was told na nikaambiwa sasa kwa sababu ujeenda university you just go kama wanaume wengine kuna msema inasema kama wanaume wale wengine enda utafute mai, maisha so i went outside kwa hivyo nikaenda nje to look for life kutafuta maisha as other men kama wanaume wengine na nikaingia kwa kazi kadhaa nikaingia kwa kazi tofauti but at this particular point i was recruited to national youth service lakini kwa wakati fulani nikateuliwa katika kikundi cha wakufundisha vijana nikurekrutiwa nikuteuliwa i think it is kusajiliwa kusajiliwa e, translator anajaribu atapigiwa makofi baadaye baadaye <laughs> acha tumpime kwanza so 
I was recruited to National Youth Service. Nikasajiliwa katika National Youth Service. And I went there to train. Na nikaenda pale kufundishwa. As a recruit. Kama mtu aliyesajiliwa. We have what we call fallen. So, okay, we have a program. The training is called program. Hayo mafundisho ni ratiba fulani. And usually after the program in the evenings. Na kwa kawaida baada ya ratiba hiyo jioni. We sit down the way you are seated. Tunaketi chini jinsi nyinyi mmeketi. We talk one two three issues. Tunazungumza maswala moja mbili tatu. Concerning the barrack. Barrack is like a dormitory. Kuhusiana na barracks. barracks. So you know when you have a you you have a barrack a dormitory a big dormitory we have in charge of what we have in charge of what so we talk extensively about these things Kwa hivyo tukiwa na dormitory hiyo kubwa tunazungumza kwa upana kabisa kuhusu mambo tofauti And now na sasa at a particular point you are given a chance somebody is given a chance to preach to these people Kwa wakati fulani mtu anapewa nafasi ya kuhubiria watu hawa Because you know when you are training kwa sababu wakati unajifunza It is not a walk in the park. Sio tu jambo rahisi. Eh hey, you see those vijana na vijiko and then ah hao wa watu ni wa vijiko. No the training is hard. Mafundisho hayo ni magumu. A little bit harder. Magumu kiasi. And so people need when they the journey gets tough you need somebody to encourage you. Wakati safari inakuwa ngumu pia wewe unahitaji mtu kukuhimiza. So I was the encourager. Kwa hivyo mimi ndio nilikuwa wa kuhimiza. Because I was a barak pastor. Kwa sababu nilikuwa mchungaji wa barak. So you used to stand up. Kwa hivyo nilikuwa kwa kawaida na simama. And preach to my fellows. Na kuhubiria wenzangu. And by the way preaching is not easy. Na hata hivyo pia kuhubiri si si rahisi. Watu wenye wanakoka wameketi huko it said uh, wenye wameketi wanaona makosa mingi. Watu ambao wameketi kwa kawaida huona. Until it is your time to stand now. Hadi ifike wakati wako wa kusimama sasa. Maneno inapotea. Maneno kawaida huwa yanapotea. So, the fact that I could preach. Swala so, kwamba ningelihubiri. I became a barak pastor. Nikafanyika mchungaji wa barak. I attained that name. Nikapata jina hilo. And so in national youth service. Kwa hivyo katika national youth service. Hakuna huduma ya toba na utakatifu fellowship like that there's no. Huko hakuna ushirika wa huduma ya toba na utakatifu. So what we have kila ambacho tuko nacho ni kanisa tatu ni kanisa tatu we have sda tuko na sda catholic catholic and the sasa pentecostal church there they call it ebenezer na kanisa la kipentecoste huko mbalo ni ebenezer so if you don't belong to sda and catholic you go to ebenezer kwa hivyo kama wewe si wa sda na catholic basi unaenda ebenezer na nikaenda ebenezer nami nikaenda ebenezer so in ebenezer kwa hivyo huko ebenezer the gospel is a little bit different from the one we know ile injili ni tofauti na ile ambayo sisi tunajua actually message that we have in this altar is a golden message kwa hakika ujumbe tulionao katika madhabahu haya ni ujumbe wa kidhahabu outside there huko nje the gospel kidogo it's a bit corrupted injili imefisadika kwa kiwango fulani i don't call them preacher i call them motivational speakers <laughs> so we have more of motivational speakers than preachers tuko na zaidi ya wanenaji wa kuhimiza watu kushinda wahubiri so the gospel is the gospel of how you can come out of this place you can get good things in the all what have you injili hiyo inahusu jinsi ambavyo mnatoka mali hapo upate vitu i don't want to blame the service lakini sitaki kumaliza ibada i blame myself because i knew the truth mimi najilaumu mwenyewe kwa sababu nilijua ukweli but i choose to subscribe to another doctrine lakini nilichagua kujitiisha kwa mafundisho mengine. And when I subscribe to this doctrine ya good good is kuna jo mambo mazuri na kwa tamu. So sweet. Wakati nilipojitisha kwa injili hiyo ya mambo matamu. So kwa they introduce the program. Nikatanguliza ratiba. Si mimi wa wakatanguliza. Wakatanguliza ratiba. Eh, they introduce the program. Wakatanguliza ratiba. To train all the barak pastor how to become pastors now. Kufundisha wachungaji wa barak jinsi ya kufanyika wachungaji sasa. You can be taught how to become a pastor. Unaweza fundishwa jinsi ya kuwa mchungaji. The basics of theology. Mafundisho ya kimsingi ya theology. Tukaanza kufunzwa. Kwa hivyo tukaanza kufundishwa. Na tukafanya mtihani. Tukafanya mtihani. Na ikadhibitishwa kwamba hao wamekuwa wachungaji, became a pastor. Kwa hivyo nikafanyika mchungaji. Wa kusomea sasa. Wa kusomea. Yeah, I became a pastor. Nikafanyika mchungaji. Through knowledge and being tested by the studies of men. Eh? kupitia mafundisho na kujaribiwa na mitihani ya wanadamu. And now after national youth service training after the pass out parade. Baada sasa ya ile gwarida ya kumalizia mafundisho ya national youth service. People are dispatched in different areas. Watu huo wanatumwa katika maeneo tofauti. I was sent to a place called Mombasa. Mimi nikatumwa mahali panapoitwa Mombasa. And kufika Mombasa where I was sent it is not a main camp it's a sub unit it's 
it's a it's a unit small unit na mahali mimi nilipotumwa sio kambi kubwa ni kambi ndogo kidogo so when you are not in the main altar kwa hivyo kama hauko katika madhabahu makubwa let me just explain using an altar so that you may understand acha nieleze kutumia madhabahu ili kwamba muelewe there are privileges of being in main altar huwa kuna tunuku fulani ambazo mtu hupata kwa kuwa katika madhabahu makubwa and also there are some disadvantages of being in the main altar na pia kuna vitu ngumu ambazo unapitia kwa kuwa katika madhabahu makubwa. So maku. even in NYS when you are in main camp there are some privileges. Kwa hivyo hata katika NYS ukiwa katika kambi kuu kuna tunuku fulani. Unlike when you are in the unit. Kushinda ukiwa katika eneo dogo. But this was my advantage because in the unit there was no church. Lakini hii ilikuwa faida yangu kwa sababu katika ile maeneo makubwa hakukuwa na kanisa. And we are allowed to go to your choice church. Na tukaruhusiwa kwenda kwa kanisa mbali wewe mwenyewe unachagua. But at this time remember I had compromised the gospel of repentance. Lakini kufikia wakati huu kumbuka nilikuwa nimekubaliana katika so, injili ya toba. And so na kwa hivyo I decided nikaamua because we've been given a chance to go to your choice church. Kwa sababu tumepewa nafasi ya kwenda kwa kanisa mbali wewe mwenyewe unachagua. Wacha nitafute kanisa basi wacha nitafute kanisa and i sat and i sat na nikatafuta na kutafuta i went to mazeras altar nikaenda kwa madhabahu ya mazeras it was a little bit far ilikuwa mbali kidogo and then i learned there was another altar called uh, changamo altar airport altar at that time nikagundua pia kuna madhabahu mengine ya changamo wakati huo iliitwa madhabahu ya kiwanja ndege by that time the pastor was emily hadasa kufikia wakati huo mchungaji alikuwa emily hadasa and so i started going there kwa hivyo nikaanza kwenda huko so going on the church of emily hadasa kwa hivyo nikienda katika kanisa la Emili madhabahu ya Emili Hadasa The gospel is not like that of Ebenezer Injili haikuwa kama ile ya Ebenezer The gospel ni hivi tu utakasa njia takasa mapito Yesu anarudi jiandaeni righteousness holiness and uh, repentance that was the gospel Injili ilikuwa tu hiki ambayo tunapata hapa kuandaa njia kujitakasa na Yesu anarudi uhaki na utakatifu So if somebody is thinking natoka Kakamega niende Mombasa nipate wamepinda no kwa kama mtu anafikiria nitatoka hapa kama gani Hapana viwango ni vivyo hivyo Since 2004 the standards are the same Kuanzia mwaka 2004 viwango vimebaki vile vile So it tells you Kwa hivyo hiyo inakuambia I was not comfortable Sikukua nimestareheka Na nilikuwa nilikuwa nacheza keyboard huko Na nilikuwa nikicheza kinanda huko And when I was playing keyboard huko ni wazee wanacheza like now huku kwetu ni vijana wanacheza So you could you could tell ni wazee because when they are praying you could see some rings unachomwa na pete macho unaona hao wameoa and now when she's preaching na sasa wakati mchungaji anaubere she could say angelisema some of you wengine wenu attaching the instruments of the lord are, are in immorality ambao wanaguza vyombo vya bwana kwa katika usherati so, i could look around ni jiulize kwani tuko wangapi and then naona hapa anasema mimi ningeangalia kote kote nijiulize kwani tuko wangapi alafu naona anasema mimi so the fact that i could hear that gospel was piercing me swala so, kwamba ningesikia injili hiyo ilikuwa inanidunga and it's like she was seeing what i was doing behind the scene nikana kwamba alikuwa akiona kile ambacho nilikuwa nikifanya kwa siri i decided ah wacha niache kuja hii madhabahu nikaamua basi wacha niache kuja kwa madhabahu then we go back to the camp wacha nirudi tena kwa kambi and mobilize my fellow barak pastors na nihamasishe wachungaji wenzangu wa kambi that we can open a fellowship there kwamba tuweze kufungua shirika pale After Ror, I am a pastor. Hata hivyo basi mimi bado ni mchungaji. Sitakubali kukemewa. Mimi sitakubali kukemewa. But ni heri yule anasikiza kemeo. Lakini ni heri yule ambaye anasikiza kemeo. Eh, ni heri mwenye anasikiza kukemeo. Kukemewa ni upendo. Kukemewa ni upendo. Kukemewa ni upendo. Ukiaiona mtu akuambii kitu akupendi, ukifanya makosa, akuambii kitu akupendi. So I went to the to the camp kwa nikaenda kwenye kambi tukaanza fellowship ya usiku usiku ikakuwa mchana mchana na tukaanza kuhubiri but now we are not preaching holiness lakini sasa hatuhubiri utakatifu we are preaching what you know when you do theology wakati unafanya theolojia unasoma watu kenye wanafikiria wewe unasoma kile ambacho watu wanafikiria eh si ati unaingia kwa akili yao na wasoma but you can know unaweza kujua for example i was telling people kwa mfano nilikuwa nikiambia watu ukijua audience yako ni wa mama ukijua watu wanaokusikiza ni ukina mama shida ya wamama inakoga ni ndoa shida ya ukina mama kwa kawaida huwa ni ndoa na hii ndoa labda mume wake ndiye shida na labda katika ndoa hiyo mume ndiye shida ama pia kwenye aliolewa wakwe zake wanapigana na yeye so if you preach in that line naona kuna mtu anateswa na wakwe zake I'm sure hata hapa watasimama. Ukihubiri katika mkondo huo kwamba ninaona kuna mtu ambaye anateswa na wakwe zake, basi utaoka. Na pesa ya chama, kuna kitu inaitwa chama but sijui kama huko mnaendaga. There are those ukisema mambo ya chama umeweka wa mama kwa your fingertips. 
they are there wako hapo so you know kwa hivyo unajua tu vijana shida yao ni kazi masomo na ndoa hakuna kitu kingine wanafikiria so ukianza kusema naona mtu anaenda kupata kazi na unahubiria vijana watasema amen wataruka ruka they will be celebrating hata wanataka kutoa sauti because ume touch what is touching them so in theology you are taught about knowing your audience understanding them katika theology unafundishwa kujua watu ambao unaongeleza na, ku, na pia kuwaelewa. Ukienda kwa Wasamburu last Sunday to we were in Samburu, hawapandi mahindi. So utaenda kuambia, "Naona mashamba yenu ikimea." No. Utaenda useme mifugo yenu. Umewashika. Ukienda Samburu utazungumzia kile ambacho unashughulika nacho ambacho ni mifugo. That is what we used to do. Hicho ndicho tulikuwa tukifanya. So when you are dealing with youth, you tell them what they want to hear. Kwa hivyo unaposhughulika na vijana unawaambia kile ambacho wanataka kusikia. But remember, lakini kumbuka. The original gospel, the eternal gospel of Yahweh. Injili ya asili, injili ya milele ya Yahweh. Lazima ikemee dhambi. Ni lazima ikemee dhambi. Na lazima isisitize utakatifu. Na ni lazima pia isisitize utakatifu. This thing of telling people what they want to hear. Jambo hili la kuambia watu kile ambacho wanataka kusikia. It is a business it's not gospel. Ni biashara sio injili. So I entered into a business. Kwa hivyo nikaingia katika biashara. Na vijana wakatoa sadaka. When you tell people what they want to hear. Ukiambia watu kile ambacho wanataka kusikia. Utangangana kuambia walete love offering mjenge kani. They will bring Hautangangana kuambia walete sadaka ya upendo watalete tu wenyewe wataleta When you tell them what they want to hear Ukiwaambia kile ambacho wanataka kusikiza But if you preach holiness Lakini ukihubiri utakatifu It will be hard for them Itakuwa vigumu kwao Because huyu unamwambia vile anataka kusikia anaenda ana corrupt ana leta pesa Kwa sababu hey, So you touch ma, lakini ukimkemea hata itakuwa ngumu kupata ile pesa because hiyo njia alikuwa anapata hata pata I'm sorry I'm using Swahili na Kizungu but just bear with me So And so kwa hivyo uh, after after we preached there baada ya kuhubiri pale unapeangwa course sasa ukitoka kitu tunaitwa national building i was sent to nyeri kwa tunapewa course ya kufanya na mimi nikatumwa kule nyeri sasa nyeri kufika ni college it's a college kufika huko nyeri ilikuwa taasisi and i found that huko hakuna sasa ministry karibu na nikapata huko hakuna huduma ya toba karibu of course hata ningeenda i couldn't be comfortable because if the gospel was the same and i believe it is the same hata hivyo kama ningeenda singe singe stareka pale kwa sababu injili ni sawia tu singe toboa singe toboa bado so in nyeri kwa hivyo huko nyeri kwa shule kuna kitu inaitwa Christian Union CU they call it CU shuleni kuna kitu ambacho inaitwa muungano wa Kristo and people preach there na watu huhubiri huko vijana sasa vijana so remember i am a pastor kumbuka mimi ni mchungaji and there's what we call superiority complex lazima ni mimi nikuwa nikisema ya na kuna kile ambacho inaitwa kuji, in, kujiona bora zaidi and by the way i'm so so happy na hata hivyo ninafurahi kabisa this is the only church where a senior deputy archbishop can sit and listen to a one month old pastor hii ndio kanisa pekee ambayo naibu askofu mkuu mwandamizi mkongwe anaweza kuketi na kusikiza mchungaji mchanga hiyo kitu si mchezo hiyo sio mchezo superiority complex kujiona bora outside there huko nje hakuna vile mtu mtu mdogo anaweza kuhubiri mtu mkubwa hapana no lazima mkubwa aseme he must have the same ni lazima mkubwa ndiye aseme so when they try to penetrate kwa siku kuna kitu inaitwa sasa the members of the clergy wale wanaka ni vijana tu nikajaribu kujipenyeza pia katika wale makuhani wa pale outside there they have titles aposto 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 huko nje wana wana vyao vyao wanaitwa mitume mitume aposto ijai niingia because i you know apostle paul it makes sense but apostle kahuria it tells you inge ingiana inge ingiana jina mu mtume yeah? haikuwa kuniingia so, so hata hivyo they were talking in tongues walikuwa wakizungumza katika ndimi yangu pia iwezi kuongea in tongues i'm slow utajua huyu anajifanya you know kuna ile tongues mtu anaweza fake udhani anaongea but sasa yangu ni nzito nitaenda kusema raba huyu hapa so i never i never got a position there sikuwaipata nafasi cheo pale because i never got a position there kwa sababu sikupata cheo huko because of superiority complex ikaniambia ni hey, wachana na kanisa ya vijana enda kanisa ya wazee nikaenda kanisa inaitwa PCE kwa sababu ya kujiona bora ni kitu kaniambia basi wewe enda kwa kanisa lingine la, la wazee so, ambayo inaitwa PCE in PCE huko PCE that church is of elderly people hiyo kanisa ni ya watu wazee the gospel there also injili huko pia is not Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jana za toka hapa na shikwa. But I'm telling you the gospel there. Waambia injili huko. Also pia is one thing. 
ina imepungukiwa but at least there lakini angalau huko hutakosa wale wazee wanapeana story but then the preacher can come and start singer kulikuwa na 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 kobe na sungura then it that is the sermon hiyo ndio mahubiri and then they tell you the moral lessons now alafu wanakuambia mafundisho kutokana na hiyo na ina nini kwa mkristo na ina maanisha nini kwa mkristo eh na mnamaliza alafu mnamaliza so i used to go there kwa sababu nilikuwa nikienda huko but because huko. the gospel was not transforming me lakini kwa sababu injili haikuwa ikinibadilisha i ended up becoming a drunkard nikaishia kuwa mlevi nikakuwa mlevi toward the end of the year kuelekea mwisho wa mwaka i became a drunkard nikafanyika mwaka toward my final year in the school kuelekea mwaka wangu wa mwisho shuleni in colleges we read in, uh, in, in in technicals we read in uh, tunasoma na three stages katika, kama unafanya diploma that is katika vyo vyo kifundi huwa tunasoma katika awamu tatu and one uh, one stage inaitwa module 1 the next module 2 and the last one module 3 ya kwanza ni module 1 ya pili module 2 ya tatu module ya tatu so in my module 3 i became a drunkard katika hivyo katika awamu yangu ya tatu nikafanyika and i became a drunkard because of peer group na nikawa mlevi kwa sababu ya vikundi vya wanarika i want to believe in the house we have youths and teenagers nataka niamini katika nyumba tuna vijana na wanarika and uh, we will talk we'll talk extensively i'll give the scriptures na tutazungumza kwa upana nitapeana maandiko so i dashed into alcoholism because of peer groups nikaingia katika ulevi kwa sababu ya msukumo wa narika and also because i was becoming depressed in a way na pia kwa sababu nilikuwa nikisongwa na mawazo kwa njia fulani because nilikuwa na bed pesa inapotea mara was like a lot of things were happening in my life sababu nilikuwa nikicheza mchezo wa pata potea pesa zinapotea na mambo mengi kabisa yalikuwa yakitendeka kwa maisha yangu and then i started becoming a drunkard alafu nikaanza kuwa mlevi and now one day siku moja sasa when we finished our final paper tulipomaliza mtihani wetu wa mwisho we went outside with friends to drink tukatoka kwenda na marafiki kunywa pombe e, hata kwa kanisa kuna kitu inaitwa mob psychology sisi kuna kitu watu wanasemaga sisi in fact you hear people hata akiongea anasema sasa sisi sasa kila time lazima aseme sisi so sisi tulienda kukunywa pombe kama sisi kwa hivyo tukaenda kunywa pombe kama kikundi chetu sisi and you know when you in, uh, in that wing, we were in that wing of sisi na wakati tulikuwa katika sehemu hiyo ya sisi you tend to think you are so safe huwa unaanza kukisia kwamba uko salama kabisa but life and salvation is personal lakini maisha ya uokovu ni ya kibinafsi it's not of sisi it is of mimi sio jambo la sisi ni swala la mimi so we went to drink a sisi kwa hivyo tukaenda kunywa pombe kama sisi coming back na nikiwa tunarudi nyumbani tukapa, si nyumbani shule sasa tukiwa tunarudi shuleni tukapata wamefunga gate tukapata wamefunga na kukuu and we took a cost a sin we cost a sin there tukasababisha mzozo pale and uh, the guard there went to call for the backup na mlinzi pale akaenda kuita mwanzake and the security in charge of that school by the way was a man from this side za nyanza so he's a tall man a huge man sasa alikuwa na torch nyingine inaitwa electric torch akikuguza nayo kwanza ina una unapigwa shock so we knew when he will come alijua wakati atakuja it will not be good for us haitakuwa nzuri kwetu and remember this is our final day in that school so we can also be charged with offense siku ya kukuja ku clear unaambiwa sasa unafaa ulipe 20000 ndio kwe clear na kumbuka hiyo ilikuwa siku yetu ya mwisho kwa hiyo shule unaweza pewa unaweza ambao uko na hatia fulani so we opted not to make the worst as uh, the situation was so we opted not to jump over the fence tukamoa acha tusifanye hiyo swala liwe baya zaidi acha tuturuke katika ua sasa tunaruka tunavuka tunaruka and then i was the last one kwenda kuruka nikasikia kak i i twisted my ankle nikateguka katika kisigino changu i twisted my ankle And then I called my friends who were nimevunjika. Nikaita marafiki zangu nimevunjika. Thank God in NYS we are taught about brotherhood. Katika NYS watu wanafundishwa kuhusu udugu. They say soldiers you cannot leave your brother in a battlefield. Hata akipigwa risasi si mzito unamwekelea hapa unapotea na yeye. Wao wanasema kwamba katika kama kama wanajeshi hawezi kuwasha ndugu yako katika eneo la vita. So wakanibeba and they took me to my hostel. Wakanibeba wakanipeleka katika bwendi langu. And the next morning everybody went home. Asubuhi leo fi iliyofuata kila mtu alienda nyumbani. Sasa kwao. Kila mtu akaenda kwao. Eh hata tukikufa ama siku nyakuzi itafanyika kila mtu ataenda kivyake. You will always go alone. Kila mara utaenda kivyako. Tulikuwa sisi lakini sasa nikienda nyumbani naenda kama mimi. 
everybody is going to where he or she belongs kila mtu anaenda kwao mwenyewe so uh, on reaching home because i had squandered all the money with drunkenness sababu nilikuwa nimetapanya pesa zote na ulevi mom knew i had money Mama yangu alijua nilikuwa na pesa. And by the way the parents who are in the house. Hata hivyo wazazi walio ambao wako katika nyumba. Do not believe what you see. Usiamini kila ambacho unaona. Sometimes follow up your children. Wakati mwingine fuatilieni watoto wenu. Mama yangu ungemwambia na kunywa pombe angekwambia unaonea kijana yangu. Aku anaamini naweza. Hata saa hii anasikiaga ite simu na shangaa. Aje. Kuna kitu inaitwa kusafisha picha. Eh hao watu wa picha wakikupiga hakuambi hakutoleagi picha anaendaga anaifanya fanya vitu alafu inatoka unashindwa kwani imekuwa mweupe inaitwa kusafisha picha so even in life kuna watu iko kusafisha picha hata kwa maisha kuna kila bacho inaitwa kusafisha picha ukikuja nyumbani you are holy as thou but sasa ukienda nje that is where they can wanaweza kutoa testimony yako na huyu aseme mambo ya kijana yake and they differ so when i came home ilipofika nyumbani my mom is asking me ulifanya nini mungu anamwambia nilikuwa nacheza mpira ikaume na mimi sijai cheza mpira so i'm telling her kwa hivyo ninamwambia i broke my leg while we were playing football nilivunja mguu wangu tulipokuwa tukicheza mpira yeah she never knew me uh, as a person who can play football because growing up i, I was disadvantaged my height mwili ilikuwa tu inakata ikiwa mkubwa nilikuwa mwili wangu ulikuwa tu unakataa kucheza mpira kwa hivyo hakunijua kama mtu wa kucheza mpira the only thing i could do best jambo la pekee ambalo ningefanya bora zaidi kuimba ni kuimba kuimba si kuimba kuimba ni kuimba eh hey. samahani <laughs> say search upate kuna police officer and then tushikwe hapo so ni kuimba kuimba and one day i tried to go something inaitwa walking race that was the only thing i could be good at hiyo ndio jambo la pekee ambalo ningekuwa nzuri kwa nothing else hakuna kitu kingine so telling her nilikuwa nacheza football was a shocker to her but anyway It's okay. Kwa sababu kumwambia nilikuwa nikicheza kandanda ilikuwa kitu cha kumshtua lakini. Then she told me go to hospital. Akaniambia basi enda hospitalini. The thing she never knew. Kitu ambacho hakujua. I had nothing in my account. Sikuwa na chochote katika account yangu. Nilikuwa nimebakisha 500 na sina cash ni fuliza ile ya kukopa. Nilikuwa tuna fuliza ya 500 peke yake. Limit. So I told her no this the leg nikichoma na maji ya chumvi itakuwa sawa. Nikamwambia mguu wangu nikichoma tuna maji ya chumvi. Kwa sababu ilikuwa imefura. Kwa sababu ilikuwa imevimba. And uh, when it reached January. Na ilipofika January. I told God. Nikamwambia Mungu. I felt that these problems by then ilikuwa na shida mingi. These are just part of the problems. Hizi tu ni sehemu ya shida nyingi ambazo nilikuwa nazo. I told God. Nikamwambia Mungu. I feel these problems are related uh, uh, coming towards me because I drifted away from the altar. Nina hizi shida hizi zinakuja kwangu kwa sababu nilisonga mbali na madhabahu. Please. Tafadhali. Just allow me. Niruhusu tu to go back to the altar in the day you will heal me this leg. Nirudi tu tena kwa madhabahu siku ambayo utaniponya mguu. And I, I told him if you heal me this leg. Na nikamwambia ikiwa utaniponya mguu huu. I go back to the altar. Basi nitarudi tena kwa madhabahu. If you heal me this leg. Ikiwa utaniponya huu mguu. And the Lord is faithful. Na Bwana ni mwaminifu. Around mwezi wa tatu mwisho mwisho. Yapata mwisho mwisho mwezi wa tatu. Nilianza kukanyanga kama mwezi wa tatu mwanzo mwanzo but sasa kukanyanga ile vizuri naweza kutembea mwezi wa tatu mwisho mwisho around that month yapata mwezi huo my leg got healed mugu wangu ukapona and i honored the agreement nami nikaheshimu makubaliano hallelujah hallelujah and i returned back to the altar na nikarudi tena kwa madhabahu one thing i've not said jambo moja ambalo sijasema mara ya kwanza kuokoka mara ya kwanza kuokoka madhabahu nilienda ni ya kijiji kwetu Nilienda kwa madhabahu ya kijiji nyumbani kwetu. Eh inaitwa Biston Altar. Inaitwa madhabahu ya Biston. Naanda one over here Isabella Nyangai. Chini ya mwangalizi Isabella Nyandai. So, kwa hivyo, this time, wakati huu, kwa sababu nimerudi madhabahu, kwa sababu nimerudi kwa madhabahu, nikasema sitaki kurudi madhabahu ya kijiji. Nikasema sitaki kurudi kwa madhabahu ya kijijini. Why because? Kwa nini? Kwa sababu ma- madhabahu ya kijiji kuna kitu tunajua nanga. We know each other. Huwa tunajuana katika madhabahu ya nyumbani. In fact, we know you by your problems, by your your advantages tuna tunasemaga. Ah, ni yule yana na kuaka mwenye alioa juzi. Mwenye alioa msichana that 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 is what we define. Ule mama aliuza viazi that. So this altar when you go to that altar. Kwa hivyo katika madhabahu haya unapoenda huko. Na njia zako zisikwe straight. 
You'll be the talk of the city na watu utakemewa tu na utasimamishwa. Said, let me go to a far away altar where I can sit and nobody knows me and it will be quiet I don't want to lose you we are in the altar now. Tuko kwa madhabahu sasa. Joro main altar. Madhabahu makuu ya Joro. Now this was my life in Joro main altar. Hii ndio ilikuwa maisha yangu katika madhabahu makuu ya Joro. Kwa sababu nilikuwa nimevunjika mguu. Kwa sababu nilikuwa nimevunjika mguu. Singeenda kutafuta kazi. Nilifanya catering and accommodation management. Nilisomea mambo ya kushughulikia maslahi ya watu na vyakula. Mambo ya kushughulikia. Nilisoma mambo tu ya upishi. Nilisomea upishi. Mambo ya upishi mambo ya upishi management ya upishi and so kwa hivyo uh, because i couldn't go unajua kazi ya kupika inafaa utembee going far to hotel kama ni kusafu unafaa utembee na mguu ni mbaya and then mimi ni ule mtu singe kaa bila pesa i'm that person mwenye ile kitu yote ikae lakini pesa ingekuwa sina ningegonjeka hata that could depress me more than anything hiyo ingeni kandamiza kushinda kitu kingine chochote so i sat down kwa hivyo nikaketi chini nikaanza kufanya kitu inaitwa brainstorming eh kufikiria na kufikiria na kufikiria i was brainstorming in between the ideas nikaanza kuanza na kuwazia kupitia mambo tofauti how can i get money with this condition ninawezaje kupata pesa katika hali hii and uh, idea ikanikujia anza kupika mandazi na wanzo nikanijia nianze kupika mandazi because mandazi you only need kutuma mtu unga ukuje ukande na kurusha pale tu kwa mafuta That hiyo peke yake unahitaji tu kutuma mtu mafuta na unga uje ukande na upike hiyo peke yake. Ingine inaniuliza utauza wapi nikafikiria mama yangu anafanya kazi shule so I can be cooking and giving her she goes to sell at the school. Nikawaza pia nitauza wapi nikakumbuka mama yangu anafanya kazi shuleni kwa hivyo nikawaza naweza pika nimpe aende auze shuleni. And it's always okay. Na kila mara huwa ni sawa. Those who don't have jobs. Kwa wale ambao hawana kazi. Coming out uh, coming up with a business idea is not a sin kuibuka na wazo la biashara sio dhambi. So leo tunahubiri vitu mingi. Kwa hivyo kama wewe ni kijana pale na ujeandikwa kazi yenye ulisomea you can do something. Kama wewe ni kijana hauna kazi ambayo ulisomea unaweza tufanya jambo bado. Amwea huku kuku zinaenda sana. Amwea utati. Unajua huku kuku huwa zinaenda sana. You can start kulea kuku. Unaweza kuanza kufuga kuku. You can do something. Unaweza fanya kitu. So kwa hivyo yangu ilikuwa mandazi yangu ilikuwa kuuza mandazi na nikauza mandazi nikauza mandazi and by the way it was it uh, until today i sell mandazi hata hivyo hata hadi leo hii ninauza mandazi and it's a good business na ni biashara nzuri it's a good business ni biashara nzuri so kwa hivyo i was cooking mandazi na kupeleka nikipata sadaka unajua watu wa biashara let me tell you Achana there are people who are faithful in the church a business community people kama kuna watu waaminifu kanisani ni wafanyabiashara because these people their job security ni Mungu tu kwa sababu salama wa biashara ya watu hawa ni Mungu peke yake unlike the people who are employed by government atajua mwisho wa mwezi nitakuwa kwa pay slip kushinda watu ambao majiriwa na serikali wanajua tu mwisho wa mwezi mimi nitapata mshahara sisi wa biashara tunajua unaweza enda upate biashara imechomeka ama uende kurusha mandazi mafuta imwagike na mafuta ni expensive you know you have to be faithful. Ni lazima uwe mwaminifu. And we, I was faithful to God. Na mimi nilikuwa mwaminifu kwa Mungu. I was taking sadaka. Nilikuwa nikichukua sadaka. Kanisa yetu pia tunajenga kuna love offering. Kanisa yetu pia tulikuwa tukijenga kulikuwa pia na sadaka ya upendo. So hiyo kitu ya kusindikiza mgeni wa heshima pia tunaijua. We have it. Tuko na hiyo. Yeah, we have it. So Tuko. I used to syndicate wageni. Nilikuwa nikisindikiza wageni. And supporting the work of God. Na kusimama na kazi ya Mungu. But I minus one thing that is so so important. Lakini niliondoa kitu kimoja ambacho ni muhimu sana. Holiness. Utakatifu. You might do all these things. Unaweza fanya mambo haya yote. But if you will we, you will minus that. Lakini ikiwa utaondoa hilo. In the book of Hebrews 12 verse 14 it says. Katika kitabu cha Hebrewia 12:14 nasema. Every effort. Fanya kila jitihada. To be holy. Kuwa mtakatifu. To live with all men make every effort to live in men with uh to live with all men with peace. Let me let us read not let me not paraphrase please. Kwa sababu hapo kwa kuparaphrase I might lose it. Hebrews 12:14 Waibrania 12 mstari wa 14 The Bible says Biblia inasema Make every effort to live in peace with everyone 
Tafuteni kwa bidii kuwa na amani na watu wote. And to be holy. Na huwa utakatifu. Without holiness no one will see the Lord. Ambao bila kuwa nao hakuna mtu atakayemwona Bwana. Without holiness. Bila utakatifu. Doesn't say make every every effort to tithe. Haisemi fanya kila bidii kutoa fungu la kumi. Of course when you are holy will tithe. Bila shaka ukiwa mtakatifu utatoa fungu la kumi. Lord teach you to tithe. The Lord will teach you. Bwana atakufundisha. So I was faithful but my I minus holiness. Kwa nilikuwa mwaminifu lakini niliondoa utakatifu. Now this is my life in the church. Sasa hii ndio ilikuwa maisha yangu kanisani. Eh kama unaandika unaandika maisha huyu kijana ni nini nilifanya aende huko alienda. So you are writing. This is my life in church. Hii ndio maisha yangu kanisani. First of all. Kwanza kabisa. In the church I was a blackmailer. Katika kanisa nilikuwa mpakaji tope. How do I how, how was I a blackmailer? Nilikuwa napaka tope namna gani? For example, kwa mfano, when I could meet people talking about the servants of Yahweh. Wakati ningekutana na watu wakizungumza kuhusu watumishi wa Yahweh. The best thing you should do not to defend. Jambo bora ambalo unaweza fanya si kutetea. At someone tell Karwale, no. Okay, it's okay to tweet but si uende sasa uambie Karwale sasa unajua iko hivi na hivi. No. Ni vyema kutuambia kutu kutu senator iko hivi na hivi. The best thing you need to do is to run. Jambo bora zaidi ambalo unahitaji kufanya ni kutoroka. But I could stand there. Lakini mimi ningesimama tu hapo. Lord nasema na hiyo ni hiyo umesema ni ukweli. Mimi nakubaliana hiyo mama umesema ni ukweli. When I was in the church. Nikiwa tu kanisani. So in the church I subscribe to others people doctrines. Kwa kanisani nikiwa huko pia nilijitishia kwa mafundisho ya watu wengine. So unanipata kwa TV tu nageuza tu TV. By the way nowadays in Nakuru I don't know if it is so here in Nakuru stations za mahubiri ni mingi kuliko wenye wanahubiriwa we have a lot of them eh Kwa Nakuru tuna station nyingi kabisa za wahubiri Station zenye zinaonyesha news ni chache sana kuliko za wahubiri ni wengi sana Station zinazopeperusha habari ni chache kushinda station za wahubiri So I used to tune those stations nasikiza huyu nasikiza huyu Kwa hivyo nilikuwa nikifungulia station hizo nashikiza wahubiri in the ministry Nikiwa tu katika huduma In the ministry of Elijah. Katika huduma ya Elia. But I'm following other people. Lakini nafuatilia pia watu wengine. That was my life also. Hiyo ndio ilikuwa maisha yangu pia. Also in the church when people were celebrating. Pia kanisani wakati watu walikuwa wakisherekea. You know it is a big thing. It's a very very big thing. Unajua ni jambo kubwa kabisa. That a doctor, a learned doctor has said now this man. Kwamba daktari aliyesoma kaitimu anasema mtu huyu Uh, ama all this woman ama mwanamke huyu tumemtoa tumbo aezi pata mtoto tumbo ya uzazi tumemfanyia upasuaji tukamtoa tumbo la uzazi kwa hivyo hawezi pata mtoto in fact a white doctor mzungu doctor kwanza hata daktari wa mzungu and then halafu this woman huyu mwanamke the one who has been said that hawezi pata mtoto bila ambaye imesemekana hawezi pata mtoto mungu anaenda anamuguza kupitia nguvu za manabii wake ambazo wamewekeza kwa manabii wake Mungu anamguza kupitia nguvu alizowekeza kwa manabii wake na saa hii ananyonyesha Alafu sasa hivi ananyonyesha And then somebody like me Alafu mtu kama mimi When people are celebrating wakati watu wanasherekea nimeketi Mimi nimeketi That was my life nilikuwa na keti Hiyo ndio ilikuwa maisha yangu To me it looked a small thing like as if it was a small thing Kwangu mimi ilionekana kama ni kitu kidogo I was not celebrating the Lord in the church. Sikuwa nikimsherekea Bwana kanisani. Nilikuwa naona mimi sifai kuwa nafanya hizi vitu na kiti. Another thing I was doing in the church. Jambo jingine ambalo nilikuwa nikifanya kanisani. I never kubaliana na kuachana na marafiki zangu. Sikuwahi kubaliana kuachana na marafiki zangu. And usually na kawaida when they could ask me unaenda kanisa gani tunakuona ukienda kanisa sana you used to tell them another name cha kanisa nyingine tu jina ya kanisa nyingine because if i could tell them repentance and holiness kama wangenuza naenda kanisa gani ningeombea tu kanisa jingine kwa sababu kama ningeombea naenda katika toba na utakatifu sema wewe wewe ni wa hiyo kanisa you know they know wangeuliza kwani wewe ni wa hilo kanisa wanajua watu wa repentance wamenyoka kwa sababu wanajua watu wa kwa toba wamenyoka lakini mimi nilikuwa nimepinda pinda so they will know this is not from repentance kwa hivyo watajua know the threshold. Huwa wanajua kiwango cha toba. They know the standard sorry. Wanajua kiwango. So I used to lie to them ah sienda naendaga kanisa nyingine tu huko Njoro. Kwa hivyo nilikuwa nikwenda ganya nenda kwa kanisa jingine tu huko Njoro. So I never uh, achana sikuachana na marafiki zangu wabaya. Kwa hivyo sikuachana na marafiki zangu wabaya. Kwa dunia. Marafiki wa dunia. But the Bible says. Na Biblia inasema in the book of Amos 3:3. Katika kitabu cha Amos mlango wa 3. Tunaenda tukisoma sasa tunaenda tukisoma Amos 3:3 Amos 3:3 and also we read uh, Romans Romans 12 verse 1 pia tutasoma Warumi mlango wa 12 mstari wa kwanza verse 2 sorry mstari wa 
uh, let us read Amos 3:3 3, 3. it asks Inauliza. do two people walk together do two walk together unless they have agreed to do so Je watu wawili utembea pamoja wasipokubaliana kufanya hivyo And the answer is no Na jibu ni la Hawezi tembea na mtu hamusikizani The answer is no Jibu ni la So the fact that I was walking with the friends who are still in the world it means we had an agreement Kwa sababu swala kwamba nilikuwa nikitembea na marafiki ambao huangali katika ulimwengu wa maanisha tulikuwa na makubaliano In the book of now the book of of Romans 12 verse number 2 katika kitabu cha Warumi mlango wa 12 mstari wa 2 is giving us a solution to this. Inatupatia suluhisho kwa hili. It says, na inasema, do not conform to the patterns of this world. Usijipatanishe kwa mifano ya so ulimwengu huu. If you huu. have friends. Kwa hivyo ikiwa uko na marafiki. In another word he is saying, kwa maneno mengine anasema, please please. Tafadhali let tafadhali. Let be the friends who are going the same direction you are going. Tembea na marafiki ambao wanaenda kuatika mweleko mmoja ambao unaenda. And our direction is heaven. Na mwelekeo wetu ni mbinguni. Not any other other. Si kutafuta nyota. Our direction is heaven. Si mwelekeo mwingine eti kutafuta nyota hapa na kuelekea mbinguni. The stars are in heaven we can see them at night, eh? Nyota ziko juu mbinguni huwa tunaweza kuona usiku. Our only star is the bright morning star Jesus. Si kwenye tutakutana na yeye. Nyota yetu ya pekee. Uso kwa uso kwa karamu ya mwana kondo. Nyota yetu ya pekee ni Yesu Kristo. Nyota Nyota mwangavu iwakae asubuhi. Ya nyota, just look at him. Oh no, nyota. It is done. So, the Bible says. Kwa hivyo Biblia inasema, do not conform to the patterns of this world. Usifuatishe tena mfano wa ulimwengu. But transform by renewing of your mind. Bali mgeuze kwa kufanya upya nia zenu. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. Ndipo mtaweza kuonja na kuhakikisha ni nini mapenzi ya Mungu yaliyo mema ile upendeza. These I will not read. You will write. Mwisho hii sitasoma mtu ndipo. 1 Corinthians 15. Wa Korinto wa kwanza 15. Verse number 33. Mstari wa 33. The Bible says, Biblia inasema, Be not deceived. Usidanganywe. Bad company. Watu ushirika na watu wabaya. Corrupts good character. Uharibu tabia njema. Musidanganyike. Musidanganyike. Eh, kutembea na watu wabaya inaharibu tabia nzuri. Kutembea na watu wabaya uharibu tabia. I was in the church but I ignored this scripture. Kwa hivyo nilikuwa kanisani lakini najua nikapuuza hili hali. And I'm talking to somebody mwenye ako na marafiki. Na ninazungumza na mtu aliye na marafiki. Ask yourself. Jiulize mwenyewe. Are they a good company or bad company? Jeni ushirika wa watu wazuri ama so, watu wabaya. Au marafiki zangu walikuwa watatu plus me we made a group of four. Kwa hivyo marafiki zangu walikuwa watatu pamoja na mimi tulikuwa wanne. Two ladies, wadada wawili. One Muslim boy, kijana mmoja Muislamu. And then mimi kijana Mkristo vuguvugu. Alafu mimi kijana Mkristo vuguvugu. And those were my friends. Oh, ndio walikuwa rafiki zangu. Mzungu anasema show me your friend and I will tell the kind of a person you are. Mzungu anasema nyonyesha rafiki zako na mimi nitakuonyesha wewe ni mtu wa aina gani. By looking at your friend I can tell wewe unakaaje. Nikiangalia tu rafiki yako naweza jua wewe unakaaje. Because na you've agreed to walk together. Kwa sababu mmekubaliana kutembea pamoja. So that was my life in the church. Kwa hiyo ndio ilikuwa maisha yangu kanisani. But sasa my economic economic life I, we have financial life also. Maisha yangu ya kifedha. Nilikuwa napika mandazi nilikuwa nikipika mandazi through mandazi nikanunua pikipiki kupitia mandazi nikanunua pikipiki na nikaanza kulea kuku alafu nikaanza kufuga kuku i think ningekuwa huku ningekuwa tycoon nafikiri ningekuwa tycoon na ningekuwa huku ningekuwa nimetajirika but i nikaanza kulea kuku lakini nikaanza kufuga na pikipiki na pikipiki it's always good to have some uh, diverse sources of income kila mara ni vizuri kuwa na chanzo vyanzo vingi vya kupata fedha. Eh usikuwe one sided person. Usikuwe tu mtu wa upande mmoja. Kuwa na kao shapa. It is good. It is good by the way. Ni vizuri. So, kwa hivyo, kuku inaniingishia mayai. Kuku inaniletea mayai. Pikipiki inaniingishia. Pikipiki pia inaniletea. Mandazi inaniingishia. Na mandazi pia inaniletea fedha. So at the end of the day, kwa hivyo mwisho wa siku, I started uh, saving. Nikaanza kuweka When you pesa. start earning from your investment now you do what we call saving. Wakati unaanza kupata mapato faida kutoka kwa uwekezaji wako sasa unaanza kuweka pesa. I was saving because I did a wrong career. Kwa hivyo nilikuwa nikiweka pesa za hazina kwa sababu nilifanya tajriba nilisomea kitu so, so I mbaya. wanted to become a teacher but I ended up becoming a kitara. Nilitaka kuwa mwalimu lakini kaishia kuwa mpishi. So kwa hivyo I was saving to go and continue kidogo na masomo kidogo tu. Nilikuwa nikiweka pesa kidogo ili niweze kuendelea na masomo. To become a trainer of trainees wa catering. 
nifanyike mkufunzi wa wanaofundisha upishi so there's a month it is uh, the month of november to me kwa hivyo mwezi wa november kwangu actually that is the month anaitaga the gathering month huo ndio mwanzo ambao au ndio mwezi ambao unaita mwezi wa kusanya. The audit the month of auditing myself. Ama mwezi wa kujichunguza mwenyewe. Eh, hey, wa Kristo pia ni vyema tukue na kitu inaitwa kujiita mkutano. I know tunakujanga kanisa we ni muabuduo na imba lakini ushajiita kama mkutano ukajiuliza where have I reached in my salvation? Ni nini nimeongeza? Eh, hey, nimekuwa mchungaji. Ni nini nimeongeza? Nilikuwa na hasira, imepungua. You cannot realize that unless you jite kama mkutano summon yourself to a meeting talk to yourself and Ji- make some some amends kwenye unahitaji Jite mkutano ujichunguze na ufanye marekebisho mahali ambapo unahitaji So the month I call myself to a meeting is the month of November Kwa hivyo mwezi ambao nilijiita mwenyewe mkutano ilikuwa mwezi wa November Yeah hata hii mwaka lazima nijiite mkutano but now this is a holy meeting na nijiulize ulienda kakamega ulifanya nini hata... wangapi waliokoka what what happened lazima ujiite lazima ujiite mkutano hata mwaka huu lazima nitajiita mkutano so, lakini nitajiuliza unaenda kakamega ulifanya nini what happened that time i was calling myself to a meeting to audit my financial life now not my spiritual life wakati huko nilikuwa nikijiita mkutano kuchunguza maisha yangu ya kiuchumi and then nikaona pesa yenye nilikuwa nayo alafu nikaona pesa ambazo nilikuwa nazo that time i sold the pikipiki in the kukus wakati huo ambapo nilikuwa na pikipiki na kuku it was summing up to 65000 but out of the sales i made 33400 ulikuwa unafika shilingi 1065 lakini kutokana na mauzo nilitengeneza shilingi 1033 So it is account nilikuwa natolea tithe but hizi nimeuza siko anatolea tithe so I said za account nilikuwa nikitoa fungu la 10 lakini ambazo nimeuza siko nikitoa fungu la 10 kwa hivyo nikasema The tithe of this 33400 fungu la 10 za hizi 1033 is 3000 ni 1300 na 340. I'm not a good mathematician but that is what my mathematics my formula got me. Nilinifikisha tu hapo. Mimi si mwana hisabati mzuri lakini hiyo ndio formula yangu ilinifikisha. But this time lakini wakati huu kitu ikaniambia waacha kutoa hii pesa yote bwana. Kitu fulani kaniambia waacha kutoa hizi pesa zote. Toa 1000 moja. Toa tu 1000 moja. January ikifika you will redeem the rest. January ikifika utalipa tu yemba yemba. Toa 1000 moja toa tu 1000 2340 shillings 2340 utatoa januari ikifika utatoa wakati itakapofika januari beloved let me tell you wapendwa wacha niwaambie tukifunga shule tukifunga shule kuna watoto walikuwa natoka wanafunga shule watoto tu wadogo kwa oh, watoto wakienda nyumbani ha, watoto wakienda nyumbani labda waliambiana kwa heri tutaonana tena they said that wakasema hivyo But on the way lakini njiani along Naivasha kuelekea Naivasha they met with their fate and they died wakakutana na hatima yao na wakati also the Pwani University student like three months ago pia or two months ago rather pia wanafunzi wa chuo kikuu cha Pwani ya cha Pwani yapata miezi miwili they were coming out of university going to a, uh, an academic trip walikuwa kitoka katika chuo kikuu wakienda katika and i tend to think that morning they were full of life Nafikiria asubuhi hiyo walikuwa wamechawa na uzima. Life was so bright. Maisha ilikuwa imeangaza kabisa. Hawa ni watoto wa university, sio wanajua kitoka hapo ni kazi. Hawa ni wanafunzi wa chuo kikuu wanajua kitoka hapo watapata kazi. And along the way also. Na njiani pia wakakutana head correction and then they died also. Wakagongana gari mo, lao na jingine na pia wakafa. I, I think he rolls. I don't know but wakakufa pia. Wakafa pia. University student wanafunzi wa view wa chuo kikuu so kwa hivyo you are not exceptional wewe sio tofauti this tabia ya kuita kitu inaitwa kwa procrastination nitafanya kesho hii tabia yeah. ya kuahirisha mambo alinikosea nikakwazika leo lakini sana nitamuomba nita msamaha don't wait until tomorrow to do what you can do today usingoje hadi kesho kufanya kile ambacho unaweza fanya leo In the Bible in the book of uh, Psalms chapter number 90 verse number 12 Kwa Biblia katika kitabu cha Zaburi mlango wa 90 mstari wa 12 David alikutana na hii kitu na akaomba hiyo ombi Danieli alikutana na kitu hiki na akaomba ombi hilo Daudi si Danieli Daudi Zaburi The Bible says Biblia inasema teach us to number our days Tufundishe kuhesabu siku zetu Our days are right Teach us to, re- to number our days all right. 
Situfundishe kuhesabu siku zetu vizuri. That we may not get that we may gain the heart of a with a heart of wisdom. Ili tupate moyo wa hekima. Daudi aliomba afundishwe kuhesabu. You don't know your tomorrow. Haujui kesho yako. Kitambo kwetu tulikuwa tunazika watu wazee. Kwa mwaka watu walikuwa nakufa wanne ama watano wakienda sana. But nowadays burials everywhere. We are burying premature premature people. They are premature deaths all over. Tunazika watu wachanga kabisa. Kuna vifo vya watu wachanga kote kote. And nobody here can stand and tell me the day he or she will die. Na kuna mtu yote hapa ambaye anaweza kuniambia siku ambayo atakufa. So hiyo kitu ya kusema nitatoa sadaka mwezi wa January that was demonic kwa sababu the devil shows, shows you like you have a length uh, you have a long life to live but in real sense your days are numbered. Ilo swala la kutoa sadaka la kusema nitatoa sadaka January hivyo basi likawa ni swala ambalo ni shetani anakufanya uairishe ile hali siku zako zimepimwa and before we do that i want to us to crap to that translator mwenye ametoka asiseme ametoka na tukamkasirikia wapigie makofi yeah we want to be fair haleluya haleluya eh tunazamka pia you can stand and stretch yourself kidogo waweza kusimama ujinyoshe angalau kidogo kidogo tu kidogo tu kidogo tu eh na usalimiwe mwenzako umwambie usilale wewe eh watu wa ingosi jim naambia naga umbwena malai something like that uh, yeah let us get seated now tutaweza keti sasa now sasa The devil shows you like you will live for long. Shetani anakuonyesha kana kwamba And that was my case. Na hilo ndilo lilikuwa swali langu mie. And now I never redeemed the tithe. Na sasa sikuwahi lipa nimalizie hiyo sadaka yote. Sadaka yote. And if you read the book of Malachi chapter number 3 from verse 10 kuteremka. Na ukisoma kitabu cha Malaki sura ya 3 mstari wa 10 kuendelea. If you test me Bwana anasema ukinijaribu nitafungua madirisha na milango ya mbinguni. I'll open the floodgates of heaven. And na he kisha. will prevent the pest atazuia wadudu waharibifu from coming and devouring your your properties, your things. Wasije wakaharibu mali yako na vitu vyako. So, vio basi. The opposite is also the true. Kinyume chake vile vile ni kweli. If you don't give the Lord, usipompatia bwana chake. He will command the pests. Ataamrisha wadudu waharibifu. Walaji, hata wanaitwa walaji. He will command them atawaharimrisha to come and devour what you already have. Ili wanje waharibu tayari ulicho nacho. And most of you expect watakuwa wadudu, but let me tell you sometimes it's the ideas he give you. Ideas zingine ni za upotovu. Eh? Na wengi wenu matarajia labda watakuwa wadudu lakini hata hivyo mawazo mengine huwa yanakuingia mawazo potovu so hivyo basi immediately I never gave the lord mimi si kumpatia bwana sehemu yake things started happening to me punde tu baada ya hiyo vitu vikaanza kunitokea and in my account it was a minus 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 na katika account yangu basi ikawa ni hasara 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 why because sababu ni kwa sababu of all the days kwa siku zote simu yangu ikaharibika Simu yangu ikaribika. I had to buy another one. Ilibidi ninunue nyingine. 13,000. Shilingi 1,000. I went somewhere. Nikaenda mali fulani. Kutafuta shamba. Kutafuta shamba. And on that place, na mali hapo, nilikuwa nakadiria I will spend 2,000. Nilikuwa nakadiria kwamba nitatumia 2,000 tu. But that journey took me plus 10,000. Lakini safari hiyo ikanichukua zaidi ya 1,000. Wale wameenda ushago you know those journeys za ushago. Those of you who have gone to up country mnaelewa hizo safari za kwenda kule mashambani. When you go to up countries, unapoenda mashambani, you find that everybody belongs to your clan, everybody is yours, unaambiwa ni mjomba wako. Una, you are told that everybody belongs to you, kila mtu ni wako, huyu ni mjomba wako, sijui huyu ni nani. Na everybody is expecting you to give him or her something. Na kila mtu anakutarajia umpe angalau kitu. Na because of the names they call you lakini kwa sababu ya majina wanayokuita chairman rais they call you enticing names that you give them mwenye kiti rais wanakuita majina ambayo yanakuchochea kupendeza matamu matamu and because of pride na utaki kulowa your standard you give them and kwa sababu ya kiburi you don't want to lower the standard unawapatia 10000 was gone shilingi 1000 zikaenda so 23000 nimetumia hivyo basi shilingi 2000 zikatumika and remember this is a person who wants to go to school 
Nakumbuka huyu ni mtu ambaye anatamani kurudi shule. I said now nikasema sasa because this money has gone. Kwa sababu hizi fedha zimeenda. This what we call gambling. Kuna kile kitu ambacho kinaitwa pata potea. Karata sasa tucheze. Kucheza karata. And it was a season of World Cup. Ulikuwa ni msimu wa kombe la dunia. Now remember we've entered December. Nakumbuka sasa tumeingia mwezi December. So I started betting. Ndio basi nikaanza kucheza karata. Thinking that when I bet, nikifikiria nikicheza karata hiyo, I will win money basi nitashinda pesa and recover my loss. Na nipate kukadiria zile hasara zangu zote. The devil is a liar. Shetani ni mwangu. Wanamuita muindi, muindi akanitandika. So the money zenye nilikuwa nazo nikapata tena another 10 so that 3000 in my hesabu that 3000 went in a way I could not account for a single cent. Hivyo basi nikapata hasara tena. They call him a Hindu. Kwa hivyo huyo muhindi akanitandika. Nikapata hasara shilingi 1033 zote zikapotea. The only thing I could say I bought is my phone. Jambo la pekee ama kitu cha pekee naweza sema nilinunua ni simu. And actually a phone is not an investment. That is like a liability. Na hata hivyo simu yako sio uwekezaji. Simu yako ni kitu ambacho kinaikugarimu tena utumie pesa zako. And it, 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 it uh, there's a law of depreciation, you know. Simu ukinunua leo 1000 kesho utauza 1500. It depreciate. Kuna sheria ya vitu kwenda vikipungua utamaduni wake. So it wake. is never an investment. Ndio basi huo si uwekezaji. 33000 is gone. Shilingi 1033 zikaenda. I was telling pastor si mara ya kwanza nilipoteza pesa kama hizo. Nikawa no? namwambia mchungaji that it was not my first time to lose such kind of money. I used to get a lot of opportunity of making money. You know easy money. There there are what we call easy money. Nilikuwa na fursa nyingi za kupata pesa za haraka haraka. Programs ikikuja piloting programs za serikali niko ndani. Ratiba zikitokea za piloting kwa serikali naingia pia ndani. Kwa mambo ya siasa siasa niko ndani. To do with politics. So I there. used to get a lot of money. You know hizo pesa za siasa zinakuwa ga easy money. So I used to get a lot of money. Nilikuwa napata pesa nyingi kama hizo za siasa. I somehow used to get the first hand information. County inataka nini niko ndani. So I used to get a lot of money. Nilikuwa napata mawasiliano ya moja kwa moja ya mapema kabisa. Whenever the get... county wanted something I was part of it. What thing that was common? jambo moja ambalo lilikuwa whatever i could get money azikuwa zinakaa kwa mkono iwe kwamba hata kama ningepata pesa hazingekaa kwa mkono zilikuwa zinapotea zilikuwa zikipotea in a way i could not account kwa njia moja ama nyingine singeweza kutolea hesabu so looking at my fellow peer age mate ndio basi kuangalia wenzangu wanarika wenzangu people watu niliacha class 5 nikimaliza class 8 the people i left while in class 5 and i was in class 8 they have bombers wamejenga maboma they have children wako na watoto they have pikipikis they oh, wako na pikipiki to me that was a great achievement kwangu mie hiyo ilikuwa ni jambo kubwa kupata looking at myself lakini nikijiangalia the only thing i had jambo la pekee nilokuwa nalo it's my cloth net worth yangu ni nguo ni kwamba nilikuwa tuna mavazi na the posts of facebook sir eh? These are pictures of Facebook una post post. That was my only network. Na zile picha za Facebook za kuwe Amazon nilikuwa naweka mtandao. This time I was curious and I asked God. Ndio basi mara hii nikawa na haja sana nikamuuliza Mungu. I want you to tell me where my problem is. Nataka uniambie shida yangu iko wapi. Juu nimeshika pesa mingi kwa hakika. A lot of money mimi nilikuwa nikishika because I was really receiving a lot of money but I was doing nothing. Lakini si kwa nafanya chochote na hizo pesa. I was living a life of a beggar. Nilikuwa naishi maisha ya mtu omba omba where as the money i had could have made me live life of a prominent person ili hali pesa ambazo ningekuwa nilikuwa nazo zingenifanya niishi maisha ya mtu kama mtu wa heshima and now Nasi i asa. decided nikaamua i want to seek god nataka nimtafute mungu god despite i was a lukewarm christian licha ya kwamba nilikuwa mkristo ambaye nilikuwa there was that godliness kidogo tu that was left in me kulikuwa na ile utakatifu kidogo tu iliyokuwa imeachwa ndani mwangu i had an encounter with god kitambo so i knew if you can dare god and he can do nilikuwa angalau nimekutana na mungu hapo kitambo. mapema unaombi niliombaga kitambo na akanijibu hapo nikaprove kuna mungu anasikianga so i was young kwa hivyo nikathibitisha kwamba kuna mungu na anakusikia so i said So kwa hivyo nikasema I, I want to fast for seven days. Ya kwamba nataka nifunge siku saba. Ile una fast kuanzia asubuhi mpaka jioni. Ile unafunga kuanzia asubuhi from morning to evening. Seek God. Na nimtafute Mungu. And ask God. Nimuulize Mungu. 
What is my problem? Je, shida yangu iko wapi? So, vya basi. I told him I don't want you to send me a bishop. Nikamwambia sitaki unitumie asku. And there's one thing I never mentioned in the church also I used to have a dressing code. Eh? Na pia kuna jambo ambalo sikutaja. Kanisani kulikuwa na namna ya kuvalia. Sikuwa navaa kama watu wa kanisa. Mie sikuwa navalia kama watu wa kanisa. Vitenge vitenge. I could put on vitenge. A tight trousers. Sho, ile longi ambayo inanibana kidogo. Mm, kulelea nywele. Na pia nimele, nilikuwa nimefuga nywele zangu. Na kuachilia tukucha kidogo. Na pia kucha zangu nilikuwa nimeachilia. That was me. That was Uy. my life. Hayo ndio yalikuwa maisha yangu. Yeah that was my life in the church also. Hayo yalikuwa maisha yangu kanisa. So add that if you ongeza hiyo. Tindo wangu wa kuvaa ile iko inaitwa smart casual. Yenye ukiniangalia unaona ni kama ni wa kanisa. Huyu mtu ni mdugu but bado ukiniangalia vizuri unaona hapana. I used to I could fit in the world and in the church. Ningeingiana vyema kanisani na vile vile duniani. It is there. Iko pale kwenye runinga. And a lot of people ask me sioni tofauti. Watu wengi huniuliza waniambia sioni tofauti. That is the life of a lukewarm Christian. Now when you look at that unaona tu ni kakoti. But hiyo koti ukiangalia hapa nilikuwa nainua mawe. So I used to heavy lift my mawe. So nikifanya hivi msichana aone hivi anaona huyu kijana kwa tu sawa. And then that trouser ukiangalia chini it is tight. You know, I look like wale watu wa dunia kabisa. Nilikuwa, they also wear smart casuals. Nilikuwa nakaa kama mtu wa dunia kabisa, smart casuals. Yeah, that was how I used to live. Hivyo ndivyo nilikuwa nikiishi. That was my dress code. Hivyo ndivyo nilikuwa nikiishi. Sasa. Ah. Uh, uh, now now we are in December na fast. Na nimeambia Mungu sitaki utume mtu unataka uniongeleshe. Uniambie shida yangu ni gani? So we are in the month of December. I'm fasting and I had told the Lord, I don't want you to send me somebody. I just want you to speak to me so that I may know what my problem really is. Actually, Kika, like I was hunger fast I, I hunger strike I was on a hunger strike Ni kama nilikuwa tu nimejinyima chakula lakini sikufunga Because my problem somebody already knows hata was before ni sembe mnajua shida yangu si kwa mtakatifu maandiko yanasema seek ye first the kingdom of God and anything shall be added anything else hizi vitu zingine zitaongezewa Shida yangu tayari ilikuwa inajulikana you know very well I was not holy na Biblia inasema ya kwamba tafuteni kwanza ufalme wa Mungu kisha mengine yote mtaongezewa It's like I was even fighting authority nikana kwamba nilikuwa napigana na mamlaka and then i'm asking god a holy god alafu namuomba tena mungu mtakatifu now come speak to me sasa kuja uniongeleshe by voice kwa sauti i've heard you spoke to people come speak to me nimesikia ukinena na so watu nena nami so i fasted from day 1 to day 5 nikafunga kuanzia siku ya kwanza hadi ya 5 and on the fifth day i remembered kisha siku ya 5 nikakumbuka one of these three friends had called me invited me to a party na alikuwa ameniambia usikose sherehe ya kwetu mmoja wapo ya hawa marafiki watano alikuwa amenialika katika sherehe na alikuwa amesisitiza she had insisted that i should not miss that party only that sasa ilinipata nikiomba kwa sababu ya shida kuna watu wanaomba mungu kwa sababu ya shida it is so bad ila tu kwamba wakati huo ikanipata nikiomba kwa sababu ya shida Pum, yeah. tumtafute bwana kukiwa na furaha siku ya harusi tuombe siku ya matanga tuombe we should seek the lord all the time when we are joyful whenever there is funeral, there is sadness and sorrow let's seek the lord all the time all the time wakati so wote i was seeking the lord when i have problems so basi mimi nikawa namtafuta tu mungu nikiwa na shida but when things are okay lakini mambo yakiwa tu sawa i forget god na sahau mungu so this time on the fifth if you on day 5 if you basi siku hii ya tano i remember that part nikakumbuka hiyo said nikasema sasa nikikosa kwenda hii sherehe nitapoteza rafiki. If I miss this party then I lose this friend. I will lose this friend. Nitapoteza rafiki huyo. If also I go to this party na pia nikihudhuria sherehe hii it means I will have to to to, to break the fast. Yamaanisha basi nitafungua saumu yangu. Sometimes wakati mwingine wacha kuweka nadhiri zenye uyuko shua kama utatoa. Usiweke nadhiri zenye uyuko shua utatoa utakamilisha. Don't move along or go or begin something some of us want finish. to be recognized nani ata support kanisa siku ya ile ingine tasimama na 10000 when it treat that day hata uonekani kwa kanisa tulikupigia makofi lakini uonekani that day some of us just want recognition you stand up promising to do something but when the day comes you are nowhere to be seen you are putting pledges unaweka nadhiri na hiyo siku ya kutoa unakosa kufika Then the day to give to redeem your pledge you are missing you are nowhere you give a funny excuse 
Unapeana kiji sababu. And this funny excuse. Na hiki kiji sababu. Somehow. Kwa njia moja ama nyingine. Sababu sisi ni wanadamu hiyo siku inapita na tunasahau. Kwa sababu sisi ni wanadamu that day will pass and we shall forget about But it. But we have a God who never forgets. Lakini tunaye Mungu asiyesahau. Be careful when you make bridges. Kuwa mwangalifu wakati unatoa nadhiri. Nitafunga siku saba that I'll fast for seven days and at the seven day nitafungua. Alafu baada ya siku saba nitafungua. Unaenda mahali unapata nyama imepikwa vizuri ama umealikwa sherehe kama unafungua unasema God can wait. It's so then dangerous. You go somewhere maybe there is a party proper meals prepared you so pray fast. Na unasema Mungu ataelewa. It's so dangerous. Ni hatari. So I looked between the friends. Kwa hivyo nikapima God kati ya rafiki na Mungu. The worst mistake yani kwa, kwa majibu mingi hata yeye ile ya KCSC nilipata hiyo grade niliwaambia but this was the worst answer i ever gave myself just friends hili ni jibu ama chaguo mbaya kabisa ambalo niliwahi kufanya kuchagua rafiki never make that mistake usiwahi fanya kosa kama hilo if you are given a choice to choose jesus ukipewa chaguo la kumchagua yesu and something else na kitu kingine tofauti please choose jesus tafadhali chagua yesu please choose jesus tafadhali mchagua yesu nikachagua rafiki nikachagua rafiki nikafungua nika nika nikamaliza nika mfungo tu hivyo so i just finished the fast like that i actually fasted mpaka usiku but the agreement was during the day hata hivyo nilifunga hadi usiku lakini kule kuvuru ku bishana ama kuvutana katika mawazo ilikuwa ni mchana ilikuwa ikifanyika then kisha on saturday Siku ya Jumamosi I went to the party. Nikaenda katika sherehe. Sasa hiyo hata sikuli sana. I was not even eating as kuna, kuna roi inaitwa the spirit of uh, inaitwa graton eh? Kukua mlafi ni graton. Kuna ile roi ya ulafi so, ulafi. Sitaki kukula sana nyumbani ndio nikakule sherehe. So I didn't want to eat so much at home that I may be fed up so that I have enough and I eat from the party. I understand I had friends from here kuna kitu mnaitaka disco mata. Si, kuna hayo? I understand hey. there is what we call Una, disco matanga. You, you seems like amjaienda hiyo vitu. You look like you've never attended such like things. But Yesu najua aliokoa kila mtu. Kila mtu before uokoke watu wengi walienda. But the Lord Jesus saved everybody and before your salvation so many people used to attend. So disco matanga mnaendaga hapa mnaenda hiki jiji mnaenda Shinyali mnaenda Shamahoho. The disco the disco matangas you attend from one place to another in Shinyalu ni Shamaho such na watu wanaimbaga na kuna kuliwa and there are people who sing and there is so what that day eating. hata kwetu kulikuwa si disco matanga hii ilikuwa tuseme sherehe so in our home there was such it was a party not and, really a disco matanga and i went to that sherehe na nikahudhuria sherehe hiyo ndio nifurahishe rafiki so that i may make my friend happy jesus can wait na Yesu angoje. I went to the party. Nikahudhuria sherehe. Everything went on well. Kila kitu kikaendelea vyema. Because it was a housewarming party. Kwa sababu ilikuwa tu ni, ni sherehe ya kuingiza nyumba mpya. And then kuna kitu inaitwa vijana wanaenda jandoni. Huko naona ni mwezi wa sita. Wa nane. Na kuna pia kwenda jandoni. E so kwetu wanaendaga Disemba. Na huko kwetu ikawa inafanyika Disemba. It was a traditional ceremony by the way ilikuwa ni sherehe tu ya kitamaduni kabisa so, kijana alikuwa anatoka jandoni na kuna kufunguliwa nyumba so ni sherehe mbili mahali kumoja kwa hivyo kulikuwa na sherehe moja ya kutoka jandoni na vile vile kufunguliwa nyumba sherehe mbili kwa pamoja so we went to support our friend kwa hivyo tukaenda kusimama na rafiki yetu and we went to the party tukaenda kwa sherehe tukakula we ate and then watu wakatoka kisha watu wakatoka and then sasa uh, tukabaki so we remain there and when we remain na tulipo baki our host akaingia kwa nyumba yao mpya mwenyeji wetu akaingia pia kwa nyumba yao akatoka na shopping bag so akatoka na shopping ambaye alikuwa amefanyiwa shopping bag shopping bag akakuja na shopping bag karatasi tu that had some cakes iliyokuwa na keki they were resembling queen cakes hizo keki zilikuwa zinafanana na queen cakes and she gave us 333 akatupatia kila mmoja wetu 33 and me na mimi because ya njaa kwa sababu ya njaa and because of lukewarmness na kwa sababu ya uvuguvu we were seated in a seat of three tulikuwa tumeketi katika kiti the seat of four, four. katika kiti cha watu wane but when you are a lukewarm christian lakini wakati wewe want Christo to read this scripture before i nieleze kidogo hapo kwa kuwa lukewarm na nataka tusome andiko hili the book of revelation chapter number 3 verse number 15 to 16 
Kitabu cha ufunuo wa Yohana 3:16 so So that you can understand the dangers of being a lukewarm Christian. Ili uelewe hatari ya kuwa mkristo ambaye ni vugovugo. Bible says, Biblia inasema, I know you are deeds Najua matendo yako that you are neither cold nor hot kwamba wewe si baridi wala si moto I wish you were either one or the other afadhali ungelikuwa moja au lingine so because you are lukewarm hivyo kwa kuwa wewe uvugugugu neither hot nor cold si baridi wala si moto I'm about to spit you out of my mouth nitakutapika utoke kinywani mwangu now this is jesus talking to a lukewarm person huyu ni yesu akimwongelesha mtu vugugugu and sometimes he is wishing na wakati mwingine anatamani is like he's telling you wish you kuwa mtenda dhambi kuliko kukuwa vugu vugu nikana kwamba anakuambia basi si uwe tu mtenda dhambi kuliko who died for your sin is advising you it is better you become a sinner mtu aliyezifia dhambi zako anakushauri kwamba afadhali uwe mtenda dhambi than being a lukewarm christian kuliko kuwa mkristo vugu vugu and the bible says in Nayo 16 inasema mstari wa 16 because you are lukewarm kwa kuwa wewe ni vugovugu neither hot nor cold I'm about to spit you wewe si baridi si moto basi niko karibu kukutapika watu wanatemanga mate wakati ya rufu ya kitu ni mbaya meaning when you are a rukom christian unanukia vibaya unatoa uvundo mbele za Yesu yamaanisha ukiwa mkristo ukiwa mkristo vugovugu basi unanuka una harufu uvundo mbaya mbele ya Yesu actually I was I, I, I was smelling bad I was giving a bad odor to God vio basi mbele za Mungu nilikuwa na harufu mbaya nilikuwa nanuka so the danger of being a lukewarm christian you don't fit in the church vio basi hatari ya kuwa mkristo vugovugu hauingeni vyema kanisani and you don't fit also in the world na vile vile ulimwenguni haukai kama umeingiana nao vizuri so akiongea mambo na tattoo za wasanii sijui nani ako na tattoo mimi nakula ya basi wakiongea mambo ya tattoo you could wasani. tell I was the old one out kwenye wanacheka na cheka but I don't understand what you are laughing about so unacheka tu juu ni marafiki zako but you are the old one out nilikuwa tofauti kwa wote wakicheka ni nacheka lakini sijui ni nacheka kwa sababu gani and so when I was eating my cake they never realized that mimi nilikuwa nakula haraka haraka walifikiri uh, they never they never realized walishtuka nikiwa nimemaliza ndio basi nikiwa nakula zile keki zangu hawakuona wa washtuke kwamba nakula haraka walishangaa tu nimezimaliza tayari nikula keki na soda i ate cakes plus soda kumbe keki imepikwa na bag kumbe so, the cakes had been prepared with bang for those ambao wameingia kwa hii mambo ya upishi kuna kitu inaitwa bata so oh. bata is that uh, is that mukorogo yenye sasa keki na korogangwa ndio iende iweko kwa ove ifule sasa iko keki sasa hiyo bata unaweza nini hizo mambegu kitu yote unataka unaweka hata unaweza weka chocolate uchanganye alafu upike so ilikuwa imewekwa bangi kwa hivyo hii ilikuwa imewekwa bangi the butter had been mixed with bang and used to prepare the cakes so nikakula chapati dengu dengu kama nne and then nikakula sasa bangi na sasa nikakunywa soda sasa ni soda bang hivyo that was the chronology so i ate the cakes i ate I ate the I also ate the beans at I believe wamelewa so kwa hivyo on ma, kumaliza that is when i'm being asked by the friend umemal akashtuka wakati nilimaliza marafiki wakauliza walishtuka si marafiki rafiki mwenye alitupea keki rafiki aliyetupa keki akauliza akashtuka umemaliza zako je umemaliza zako wa akashtuka akashtuka kweli kweli ikashinda mbona ameshtuka so i was shocked why my friend was so much shocked but that time i was not good enough i was not sober enough to realize mbona ameshtuka maybe nimefanya kitu mbaya but alina umemaliza wa hakuna mtu alikuwa amemaliza mmoja in between them so i also took time to realize where the problem is because there wasn't anyone who had finished even one among, the among them among them sorry among all the friends so After all nimewaambia tuna kufanyaga vitu kama sisi but sasa judgment ama shida ikitokea inatokea kwa mtu binafsi. I told you normally we can, we can do things together as a group but whenever a problem or judgment comes it will narrow down on you individually. So we started going home. Kwa hivyo tukaanza kwenda nyumbani. Wasichana wanaenda mbele sisi tunapita nyuma kuna kareli pale tunapita. You know to we, we were walking kwa reli and then wasichana wanatembea mbele sisi wanaita girl stock sisi tunaita men stock. Eh ati tunaongea men stock wale wanaongea sasa girl stock I don't know hata tulikuwa wanaume na gani but they are talking we are talking also and now the boy is telling me so we were on our way the muslim 
tukawa tunaenda na sasa yule kijana muislamu sisi tukiwa wavulana nyuma tukiongea mambo yote ya wanaume kina dada mbele wakiongea mambo ya wanadada ananikatia ingine ananipea huyu yeah. sasa kijana muislamu ananikatia ananiambia tukule so nikikula nikiwa na karibu na meza akanikatia hiyo keki yake nyingine akaniongezea akisema tukule so he gave me while i was near the table and he said akasema sasa hiyo ni kumeza na meza huyu msichana anatupima akasema huyu msichana anatupima si umekula zako zote wewe ungekula zako zote mbona azije kushika mbona azije kushika meaning why are you not yet uh, influenced by uh, we have not started seeing the effect of banging you mbona sote tumeanza kuona ile athari ya bangi ndani mwako mbona hawajaanza kuona ananiambia so umekula zako zote you vitten a raja portion and yet azijaanza kukuadhiri why akauliza, and that is when i discovered i have done a mess akauliza mbona hatujaanza kuona athari ya bangi ndani mwako ile hali wewe umekula zako zote wakati huo ndio nikagundua nimekosea i heard them talk about with cookies nilisikia kabisa wakizungumzia kuhusiana na zile cookies. but i know what a cookie looks like cookie looks more like a biscuit a big biscuit lakini cookies zinazijua vyema zinakaa kama biscuit ambayo ni kubwa kidogo but be careful lakini kwa mwangalifu shetani saa zingine anakuja akiwa amevaliwa ile nuru ya malaika wa nuru wakati mwingine shetani huja akiwa amejivika kama malaika na anaweza fanya uone ni kama ni Mungu lakini ni shetani anaweza kuona umuone ni Mungu ili hali ni shetani even in the church hata kanisani so that is when i realize ningeona cookies ningejua labda imepikwa nani but now zilikuja zikiwa keki so my guts were down hivyo basi nikashangaa hapo ndipo nikagundua kwamba zingekuja kama keki kama cookies ningezigundua lakini zilikuja kama keki hivyo basi nikawa nimeshtuka nikashangaa ni nini but after all lakini hata hivyo i'm a person mimi ni mtu who never want, who never talks about things i cannot change ambaye huwa haongelei mambo ambayo siwezi kubadilisha e, mimi kitu siwezi badilisha sipendai kuongea mimi kitu ambacho siwezi badilisha huwa sitaki kuongea most of the times mara nyingi e, ati mbona sasa hii serikali mnaiona aje sijui mwalimu anakaa juu deputy anakaa i can't change hiyo siwezi badilisha mimi nitaenda kuambia tu paranya nani si, anaitwa baraza baraza sasa hii county unaona inakaa je toka sasa ni no that i can't change hiyo mimi is the governor i have to accept is the governor hiyo mimi siwezi badilisha yeye ni governor na lazima tu nikupani so, something that i cannot reverse or i cannot undo kitu ambacho siwezi badilisha ama siwezi kukigeuza i don't like talking about it sipendi kuongelea so siwezi rudisha keki ikue keki nimeshakula sasa hata nikikasirika itasaidia so let me keep keep my keep my peace keep calm and not talk to these friends i couldn't reverse the cake and make it a cake again because i had already eaten it kwa hivyo nikasema wacha ni nyamaze nisiuje nikaongea chochote kuhusiana na mambo ya keki tena and so at the end of the day mwishosi, everybody goes to where he or she belongs kila mtu anarudi kule anakotoka tukaenda mimi ndio nilikuwa natoka mbali tukaenda mimi ndio nilikuwa natoka mbali and nikapanda pikipiki So I boarded a motor I went home nikaenda nyumbani marafiki wakaenda makwao marafiki wakaenda kwao so on reaching home wakati nilifika nyumbani is when i started realizing i'm shaking nikaanza kugundua na tetemeka sasa ile kutetemeka ya baridi nilo na tetemeka unahisi nikao unataka kushika tu kila kitu so i was furious i felt like i want to beat something nipige ukuta nipige tu mtu tu was furious lakini natetemeka nilikuwa na hasira nikawa na hisi kana kwamba nipige mtu nipige ukuta so i was shaking terribly so, a younger brother of mine ndugu yangu mdogo my mom was not in that day by the way mamangu hakuepo hiyo siku so my younger brother mwenye ananifuata tu ndugu yangu mdogo ambaye ananifuata i wanted to beat him up really well nilitaka nimpige sawa sawa nimrukie na mangumi nimpige that is what i wanted but now i knew To start a fight you have to start a confrontation. Niletaka nimpige lakini hata hivyo nikajua kabla ya kupigana lazima tukabiliane kwanza moja kwa moja. Not actually a confrontation actually uh, you have to start what we call an argument so that it can lead to confrontation confrontation will lead to fight. Lazima nianze uzushi kisha baada ya uzushi tugombane alafu so, baadaye itakuwa kupigana. I ask him question to provoke him to anger to answer me badly ndo nimpige. Kwa hivyo nikamuuliza maswali ya, kumu, ya ili ya kumkasirisha anijibu vibaya ndipo sanimpige but i think lakini nafikiri that day 
Hiyo siku Mungu alinisaidia mahali msaidia. Unajua kwa vita you don't know ni wewe utapigana ama utapigwa. The Lord must have you never, you're never sure. Kwa vita hauna uhakika. Unaweza kupigana upigwe. Unaweza kupigana kisha upigwe. Vita tuendagi na mwili. That is hiyo ni hiyo hiyo tu inakuaga utamani. Unaweza enda Goliath. Remember Goliath and David. So labda ni mimi ningepigwa in the fo, in the nini of self defense achukue kitu anikate ama nimpige ni muumize ama ni muue katika harakati ya yeye kujitetea huenda angeniumiza ama mimi ni muumize but a youth here is starting realizing the effect of using drugs lakini hapa kijana angalau anajaribu kugundua hatari ya kutumia mihadarati you can make sin, you can make a terrible terrible mistakes by doing by using those things waweza kufanya makosa makubwa sana kwa kutumia dawa za you kulevia. can even kill your brothers and your sisters waweza hata kuua ndugu zako na dada zako hata unaweza pika mtoto ukidhani ni nyama you can do literally everything because when you are in that state of uh, influence of bangi ama hizo madawa you are not sober waweza fanya chochote kwa sababu ukiwa katika ushawishi ama chini ya mihadarati imekusumbua imekufikisha kiwango cha juu ambapo sasa imekuadhiri waweza fanya chochote kwa sababu hujielewi so Hivyo basi that time my phone rang wakati huo and I went nikaitwa na mtu akaniambia just come here wakati huo nikapi, simu yangu ikalea nikapigiwa na mtu akaniambia nje hapa in my workplace mali pango pa kazi the boy was calling to suggest a business deal huyo kijana alinipigia alikuwa na wazo la kibiashara he wanted to use my phone alitaka atumie simu yangu to take uh, photos apige nayo picha atolee watu na printer yake kisha awatolee watu kwa he, chapa yake. He had a small cyber shop. Alikuwa na duka ndogo la cyber. That was the deal he had called me to propose. Hiyo ndio biashara ambayo alikuwa nayo na alitaka But before I reached there yaku. I made some stops. Lakini kabla nifike pale moja kwa moja nikasimama njiani. The first stop. Mali pa kwanza nilipofika. I was greeted by a boda boda friend. Nilisalimiwa na rafiki yangu mwende shoti boda boda. And the way I answered him, na nilivyomjibu, is like he was a far away na mtu amenisalimia akiwa hapo so na natoa sauti kubwa kama wazimu alinisalimia akiwa karibu lakini nilivyomjibu nikana kwamba ako mbali nikatoa sauti kubwa kama mwenda wazimu and then people started realizing kitu si mzuri usually i've told you kuna kitu nilitoka kusafisha picha even in my village na watu wakagundua kwamba kuna shida hapa na nimewaambieni kuna kitu kinaitwa kusafisha picha hata kijijini kwangu they kwa don't huko. know me as that uh, mtu mbaya hawanijui kama mtu mbaya huko I tend to think some even tell their children kuwa kama nani. Hata hivyo wengine wanaambia watoto wao kuwa kama fulani na fulani. Sometimes wakati mwingine I hear people wakihojiwa na ulizo who is your role model anangangana kusema mtu I wish you knew that person mwenye unasema. The role model is supposed to be Jesus alone. Mtu wako wakielelezo anapaswa tu kusikuwa ni Yesu peke yake. Wengine wanasafisha tu picha. Wengine tu wanasafisha picha. So hiyo basi this point I'm going nimesalimiwa nikajibu hai nikaingia kwa duka nyingine ya manguo wakati huu sasa nimekwisha salimiwa nikajibu kwa sauti kubwa alafu nimeingia duka nyingine la nguo and that duka somebody uh, the, the girl who was selling there namuuliza have you brought the coats that I, I wear she knows the coats I want and she told me as it ingia so I started kumgomanisha what are you doing what are you even doing you know kuna hiyo kugomanisha mtu huu unamgombanisha kwa sababu amefanya kitu mbaya what are you even doing Why do you even have this shop? You need to close it. What is this? No, no such. Kwa hivyo nikaingia katika hilo duka shouting also. Nikipiga kelele pia nikampata anayeuza pale nikamuuliza kama koti zangu ambazo mimi hufalia. A boy who knew me left. Kijana Kijan... alikuwa ananijua alitoka tu akaji excuse akapotea. Kijana ambaye alikuwa ananijua akatoka. And cutting the long story short, na kuweka katika muktasari hadithi hiyo ndefu, nikafika kwenye nilikuwa nimeitwa. Hatimaye nikafika nilikoitwa. And I think this is where the all everything happened. Na hapa ndipo yote yalitendeka. Nilifika ile cyber shop nilikuwa nimeitwa. Nikafika ile duka la cyber. And on reaching on that cyber shop, nilipofika pale. I was telling that guy of cyber shop yesterday before ni kuch Nilikuwa naambia mwambie huyo mtu hapo jana kabla nije huko hii ushuhuda ilifanyikia kwako. Nikamwambia ushuhuda huu ulifanyikia kwako. And he was telling me naona nikikuja kanisa. It's not about again but the Lord atamlet. And then he said that he'll come to church. The Lord will actually bring him. So, kwa hivyo. On that cyber shop. Katika ilo duka. Sasa nimeingia kwa cyber shop. So I entered the cyber. I'm sitting down. 
emeketi on a cane poly seat kwa hizi viti za plastic hizi on one of the plastic seats and then kisha the boys engage me in a conversation ule kijana ananiongelesha tunafanya mazungumzo i'm talking but i'm not communicating ninaongea lakini hatuwasiliani e, wale wanajua watu wanaitagwa the, the mad people those we call the mad they can talk but they are not communicating wale watu ambao mnawajua wanaitwa wenda wazimu so anaongea he's lakini asking me questions but i'm answering him in a way like hata anielewi ananiuliza maswali lakini jinsi ninamjibu hata anielewi and again tena nikaanza kuinama because i felt like i, I started seeing the bulb of his place nikaina niangukia so nimeinama hivi nimejikondesha tu nainama hivi looking up nikiona itaniangukia so i was seated while bending i thought the bulb in his shop would fall on me so i was just seated but bending down and i was seeing myself as if i was going up na nilikuwa najua ikinigonga sasa it, it will electrocute me and then i i might i might even die na nikawa najiona ni kama naenda juu kuelekea hiyo bulb na hivyo basi wazo nikanijia kwamba hiyo bulb itanigonga na umeme so, na kisha naweza kufa so sit down there i'm bending like this like something is not okay with this man hivyo basi nikawa nimeketi nimeinama mtu unaweza jua tu moja kwa moja kuna shida na huyu mwanaume and now na sasa my phone rang again simu yangu tena ikalia and i went outside to pick naenda sasa nimeinama nikatoka nje kwenda kushika nikatoka nikiwa nimeinama and nikiongea tu na simu before i could even hata words but i could realize who called me ningegundua hata hivyo ni nani amenipigia my phone fell from my hand my hand couldn't support my phone ikaanguka ghafla simu yangu ikaanguka toka mkononi mkono wangu haungeisitiri and when my phone fell wakati simu yangu ilianguka I started losing balance toward my right hand side. Nikaanza basi sasa nikama naenda hivi. Nikaanza kupoteza balance kwa upande wangu. But before moja. I could fall I started calling out. Lakini kabla ya mimi kuanguka chini the way I was calling kutuba. this boy out is another way ya kutisha because there's that thing inaingia ni kama terror before you die now I'm experiencing that I, I'm, I'm explaining that experience before death ni kama hofu fulani wasiwasi fulani shaka fulani na kuingia kabla ya kuaga dunia inakuja inakuja you start becoming terrified unaanza sasa wale watu kuchi. wale sijui shikuku uketi tu niongee Kiswahili tu please please tupigie shikuku makofi eh wacha niongee Kiswahili kwa sababu ya masaa is my friend but keti na microphone nikiongea kizungu tu naingia e, sasa wacha niongee Kiswahili tunaelewa Kiswahili sisi wote e, sasa nimekaa pale wakati naenda kuanguka kuna ile hofu inaingia kwa tumbo kuna that inaitwa tera inaingia kwa tumbo hiyo tumbo joto sasa naanza kuhisi kwa tumbo yangu na kwa mwili yangu uoga uoga wa mauti sasa unaingia Watu wenye wamekuwa na watu mahospitalini labda alikuwa amelazwa. Labda huyo mtu hakuwa anaweza kufanya kitu. But point ya kukufu unapataga labda ameanza kufusha mikono. Mtu angeza kumove. Hiyo uoga inakujanga kwanza. Sasa mimi hiyo uoga imeniingia. Sasa vile naita huyu kijana ni kama mtu kwa taharuki. So na chacha tafuta mimi kimekini. Tafuta mimi kimekini bila kujibadi sikupia bara because hiyo uoga unaisikia. So vile namuita ni kama nimekuwa wazimu. Sasa yeye anashindwa ni nini? Tulikuwa na huyu hapa ndio hako anaongea sawa but sasa ni nini huyu Tafuta wiki wiki ni vile anajaribu kunini Ai tafuta Na sasa hiyo namwambia hivyo na sweat nimetoa mishipa na niambia macho ilikuwa red tu na tetemeka Tafuta wiki Kwa kijiji yetu kuna ah, si kwa kijiji yetu kwa kila kijiji ama kwa kila familia lakini Mungu atawasaidia uokoke kuna anko mmoja anakuaga mlevi Sijui kama ni kwetu tu but kwetu tuko na anko mlevi Mwenye akikosa kukunywa pombe tutajua kitu imefanyika. Sasa huyu anko yangu alikuwa anatoka kukunywa pombe. Wakati alikuja akaniona ni mimi, anaambiwa ndo ule ule mtoto wa dada yako. Alipotea, mulevi alikutana na wazimu wenye nilikuwa akapotea. Nalia nasema masauti. Alipotea enjoja akajaribu kunishikilia kunipea balance lakini kamwambia tu tafuta pikipiki ni you, you, you think like nilikuwa nataka kumwambia i wish ufikirie kenye nataka kuambia tafuta pikipiki kwa sababu nilikuwa najua wakati wangu umefika na sasa kukufia kwa barabara isemekana ange alikufia kwa barabara itakuwa hivi at least wacha nikakufia nyumbani 
lakini sasa yeye anajaribu kunishikilia na wakati anajaribu kunishikilia namwambia wewe endo utafute pikipiki na wakati aliniachilia kwenda kutafuta pikipiki naye mimi nikasirai mimi nilikuwa naambia watu siku nyingine Eldoret wale walikuwa mimi sijawahi zirai kwa maisha yangu yote nilijaribu mara moja lakini nilijaribu kufanya kuzirai mahali pabaya eh nilienda kujaribu kuzirai tukiwa national youth service nikapigwa nikalia e, so nikajulikana siku kwa nimezirai by the way ukiona mtu amezirai usingangane mgonge mbili ukiona aje ajelie ujue huyo ni ukweli so mimi sijai zirai but hiyo siku nika collapse unaona sasa nime collapse sasa wakati nili collapse nikaona mtu kama mimi 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 tu huyu natokea hapa kwa kifua hapa Alafu hapa kwa, kwa shingo nasikia ni kama kauchungu fulani but hapa kwa ko, iko dry alafu mate mdomo haina mate. Ulimi yezi kufanya kivi eh hanya hiyo. Kwa sababu ni kama nimenyongwa hapo unasikia umekaukiwa and then ulimi macho umekondoa kwa sababu unaona. That is what happened. Na huyu mtu anatoka anatokea hapa ina wakati huyu mtu alitoka kuna upepo kwetu tunaitaga sijui mnaitaga aje kisuri suri kuna upepo kikiwa na vumbi inakujanga round hivi hata inabebaga mabati sasa hiyo upepo mimi naona upepo nyeusi kama hiyo inazunguka lakini huyu mtu ametoka ameingia kwa hiyo upepo sasa nilikuwa namuona kupitia huyu mwili lakini sasa huyu wa roho vile ametoka nikaona huyu wa mwili amianguka sasa watu wanakuja nini 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 na waona very fast wakinishika but sasa mimi naona ni mimi huyu sasa nimeingia kwa hiyo upepo inazunguka hivi. So ndazunguka niko katikati ya upepo nazungushwa lakini pia nje naona street lights ni kazi inazunguka. Hizo matazi na kuaga huko before eh, elections. Wabunge sasa ndiyo kukuja kwa entice wanaekeaga vitu zinaitwa street lights sasa hapo ndio mtaanza kuwekewa bulb bumps eh e, barabara iwekwe hadiko So sasa kwetu ilikuwa tumetumaliza tu uchaguzi so hizo vitu zilikuwa zimeweka. So naona street lights zinafanya nini? Zinazunguka. Na mimi pia niko kwa hiyo upepo inazunguka. So dunia inazunguka na upepo inazunguka. Alafu ghafla hii upepo ikanivuta. Ikanivuta tu mahali nikajipata nimeingia mahali kwingine. Na wakati niliingia pale wapendwa. Mimi kwa maisha yangu sijawahi ogopa giza, but for the first time niliogopa giza. Wapendwa nikaingia mahali nilipata giza 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 kubwa. Yaani nasemanga ukiwezaeka mawingu ya mvua usiku, utoe mwangaza yote, stima ipotee. Utoe mwezi na nyota. Bado giza ya hapa hizi itoshana na giza ya huko. Ilikuwa giza ya kutisha. Giza ya mauti. Ilikuwa ya kutisha. If you can read the second second Peter second Peter chapter number 2 verse number 17 Petro apili so that I, 17 that naezelezea hii giza ile inakaa kidogo Eh Inasema these people are springs without water and mist driven by this by a storm blackest darkness is reserved for them blackest darkness is reserved for them biblia inasema petro apili sura ya pili 17 watu hawa ni chemichemi zisizo na maji na ukungu upeperushwao na tufani ambao giza nene limewekwa tayari kwa ajili yao sasa giza nene sasa mimi nalipata sijahai kutana na giza kama hiyo so kitu ya kwanza ni realize ni hiyo giza But sasa kitu ya kutisha wakati kuna giza vision yako ikuagi nzuri hata uwezi ona actually uwezi ona. E tunaonaga tunaekaga bulb atuekagi bulb juu ya urembo tunaekaga ndio tuweze kuona. So giza inafanyaga usione. Lakini kitu ya kushangaza nikiwa kule that's why nilikuwa nasema I was so sensitive. Unaona kila kitu. Unaweza notice ni kala gani you literally know everything. So nimefika pale nakuta giza imejaa lakini naweza angalia nione mavazi ambayo nimevaa yanakaaje. Ukisoma katika kitabu cha Ufunuo wa Yohana 19. I think mstari wa 8. If I'm not wrong. Hebu tuone kama ni hiyo. 
Eh hey, fine linen inaongelelea mambo ya kitani nzuri. Fine linen bright and clean was given to her to wear. Remember who is her? The bride of Christ. Fine linen stand for the righteous act of the saint. Now, inasebaga about the bride of Christ alipewa nini avalie. Lakini haijawahi sema kuhusu waovu watavaa nini. I feel it's a continuation of life you've been living here. Asa mimi nilitoka sherehe you can tell sikuwa nimevalia vitakatifu. Nilikuwa nimevaa kofia ile kofia unafichaga macho ndio ukikutana na overseer. Eh, you know? Ukikutana na overseer usimjibu. Ama hata akikwambia praise the Lord. Unajua kuna ile amen unajibungu. Unajua amen ya mtu ameokoka. Ni amen. Lakini ukisema amen amen amen. Hiyo tunauliza swali. Eh, hey. watu wengi wanaijua ukisikia mmecheka you know. Kuna amen nyingine mnakutananga na mtu mkitoka kanisa. Kanisa amen amen. Sasa tukifika pale, Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Umemkuta kwa kikosi yake. Amen amen amen. amen. Ameisema lakini ameisema nikaje isema. So, nilikuwa nimevaa hizo kofia, nimevaa kofia imenifunika such that hata tungekutana na mtu hange nijua. Sasa nimetokea vile nilikuwa huku nimetokea huku. Hiyo ndio hatari ya kukuja Jumapili umevaa vizuri. Hizi koti zetu nasikia watu wanaziita ni wewe. Hizi za wadada. Zinaitwa ni wewe ama wa ukuhani. Kwetu wanaita tena ukuhani. Sasa umevaa hiyo lakini ukienda unavaa unaanza kuvaa crop top, unaanza kuvaa matumbo kat. Unatoa ni wewe unavaa tumbo kat. Ukufe wakati hiyo. Utatokea tu vile umekufa. So it is so so sensitive. Just mind your dress code. Sasa mimi nilitokea vile nilikuwa nimevaa. Sasa unaona niko na kofia, vile tu nilikuwa nimevaa. T-shirt ya white ndani, kaki trouser. And then uh, June nilikuwa nimevaa cleric sweater, sweater ya mauziuzi. Ilikuwa imenishika kabisa, iko na navy blue, such things. Nimetokea hivyo huko. Na nywele hata sikuwa nimenyoa mitakatifu. Nilikuwa nimenyoa mtindo wetu wa fed, eh? Na nywele hapa inaisha, inabaki ni kama box. Na sasa wakati nilifika huko nimerealize kitu kingine nilijaribu kuangalia ni kitu kinaitwa sign of life. Niangalie kama kuna majirani, kuna watu sioni kitu. Niangalie, niangalie sioni kitu. Unajua hapa unaweza muangaza huko ujue there's hope. Huko hakuna. Mbele nikaona mtu. Na huyu mtu alikuwa amevaa mavazi nyeusi. Alikuwa amevaa mavazi nyeusi. Na hii vazi inatoka kuanzia chini alafu inakuja iko na kofia imemfunika macho kwa hivyo macho si kumuona. Lakini kuanzia hapa kwa mapua kwa na pua ndefu na kufika hapa kwa kwa kidevu. Huyu mtu alikuwa white grey so ni pale inaitwa niliambiwa inaitwa eh, kijivujivu. Ni kama grey ni kijivujivu. Huyu mtu si ati ni jitu anakaa mtu tu wa kawaida only that ni mrefu kwa mimi ni mfupi ni mrefu kwangu kidogo hapa ni mtu like that but sasa mikono bado ni hiyo pale lakini ako na vidore ndefu miguu pia ako na miguu kubwa alafu miguu badala ishikane hivi the toes zinakaa hivi hivi kubwa and then alikuwa ameshika kitu kama shoka but sasa pale kwa kukata ni sharp na ime imekaa hivi brand Alafu sasa vile ameishika si kama mtu anataka kupasua kuni kuni unapasua. Ameishika like this. Anataka kunigonga moja ni bro ni malizi. And then akaanza kukuja. Anasongelea. Sasa kitu ikaniambia huyu ni yule anaitwa malaika wa kifo. Potelea maisha yako. Hey, hii ni spirit of death run for your life. Wapendwa mumekuwa mukisikia saa zingine tukienda crusades ama wakati injiri mihubiliwa kama hii tunaita watu altar call mwenye anataka kupokea Yesu alafu unaangalia jirani yako unasema sasa nikitokea ataniona aje ama nikitokea kutubu ataniona aje unakosa mchungaji anasema askofu naibu askofu mkuu anasema tukimbilie Yesu unaangalia watu unasema sikimi siku moja utakimbia mahali but it will be too late Adrenaline inaita kusaidia. Hiyo msisimko inaingiaga ndani unaanza kukimbia mbio yenye jayo inaonekana unashinda mpaka umanyara haita kusaidia. Mimi natoroka. Lakini natoroka mahali kubaya. Na ninaenda mbio napotelea maisha yangu. Maisha ambayo si kukimbilia Yesu sasa natoroka. Na nikakimbia the adrenaline of that place is another thing eh? 
yako na ile unakimbia nakimbia lakini kumbe huyu mtu kwenye amesimama ana unakimbia vile anataka uende so ana, amesimama ile side lakini anataka muende huko so unakimbia vile anataka unamrahisishia kazi so i was running in the darkness na it's like i was in the space sikima wali unakanyaga chini unasikia retra ile umekanyaga chini so nakimbia I'm told kwa hii dunia niko nasema jehanamu nimeona jehanamu Mungu nisamee na kutoa funny funny noises I'm told that Niko naongea vitu as make sense huko but huko mimi napoteria maisha yangu Alafu nikapiga kona niliona napiga kona and then naingia mahali kuna tundu tanuru inaitwa hiyo mtaro tunnel sasa nilirealize ni tunnel juu juu kulikuwa na some aspect ya rangi ya white juu but sasa mimi vile niliingia pale nilikuwa natembea na magoti na hisi magoti yangu na kanyanga vitu but immediately napita naona mikono ya watu mifupa skeleton inajaribu kunivuta chini mikono mingi najaribu kuningangania nivute chini sasa mimi tu nangangana nangangana na naenda niki sasa najaribu kupotea huko naenda tu niki oi 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 Huko hakuna mama ya mtu, huko hakuna auntie ya mtu, hakuna mjomba wako mwenye yako in the army that atakupea bunduki hapana. So huko uko peke yako. Hiyo Kristo ya sisi wacha itutoke leo apendwa. Wacha tuanze kusimama kama mimi. Sasa mimi nikafika nikatoka kwa tunnel. Sama ulili manage kutoka kwa hiyo tunnel. Na wakati nilitoka kumbe hata huyu mtu hata yeye akatoka kini huyu mtu ni yule mtu alikuwa anakaa amekukimbisha akiwa determined kukukamata hivi yani si mtu alikuwa anakaa anaweza simama but akasimama mimi ndo nilisimama wa kwanza nilisimama kwa sababu nilikuwa nimekuja mwisho wa barabara wapendwa kama utakimbilia Yesu saa hizi siku moja utafika mwisho wa barabara eh sasa hii unaweza tupiga piga chenga but siku moja you will come at the end of the roads mimi nilikuwa nimefika mwisho wa barabara kwa nini nasema nilifika mwisho wa barabara? Mbele kulikuwa na mahali pa mimi niliwa lofty place like juu kidogo. Kama kwa ukuta ya imao ya kawaida tuseme eh kosi kumi hivyo. Mali pa mimi niliwa. Alafu katikati hapo mahali kuna kuna njia inaenda hivi na njia nyingine inaenda hivi na kila njia inaenda mahali kuko na kiingilio mlango na juu ya hiyo katikati hapo mahali naona mtu ambaye mimi niliishi kumblackmail kuongea mambo yake na kutana na nabii mkuu wa Bwana pale katikati na kumbuka kuna siku alisema ya kwamba tutawakuta kwenye viingilio that was a joke to me but that day it was a reality sasa namkuta ako pale amesimama na amesimama ameshika kipaza sauti hivi na amepoint na mkono wa kulia hivi mkono wa kushoto hivi kando na mkono wa kushoto kuna ufunguo sababu tu hapa kidogo tu ziko parallel mbili ufunguo mbili zimeelea tu juu hiyo i don't know kama gravity huko ifanye kazi but zimeelea so huyu mtu wako nyuma pia akasimama mara ya kwanza sikujua hata nikielezea sikujua kwa nini alisimama kwa sababu ukikimbisha mwizi unatakaga umshike so huyu mtu akinikimbiza alikuwa alishike but akasimama kumbe alisimama kwa sababu hata yeye aliona manabii wako nilikuwa naambia watu juzi nilikuwa nasoma hatiko e, ya Musa vile alikufa wengi wenyu mlisikia Musa alikufa na akauliwa na Bwana so i wanted to to know mbona Mungu ndiye alikujia Musa e, mbona ni Mungu alikujia Musa na nilikuwa na hata ni screenshot. Eh, mahali Musa alienda, Musa kifo yake ilikuwa hivyo rais. He drew a circle. Alikuwa amekataa kukufa. Akaanza ku question Mungu. Anauliza wewe ni mtakatifu kuliko Noah, anasema ndio. Noah wakati ulimwambia mafuliko inakuja, alijiokoa peke yake hakulilia watu. Mimi nimeishi kulilia taifa. Anaulizwa, wewe unashinda unashinda Abraham? Anasema ndio. Abraham Abraham tu alidanganya he was questioning god Moses was tough and now sasa nikataka kujua mbona hiyo spirit of death haikumkujia and then nikaona kifo ilikuja kukujia Musa kaniambia rudi usemesikuje you cannot take me just go 
and say I'm not coming. Karudi. Kambia Mungu amekata. Kambiwa rudi umchukue. Kaenda akaripota akasema, "Si rudi, nimesema wewe unichukui sikuji." So si mara ya kwanza Musa kukataana na kifo. Even the death fears Moses. And we know Moses is in the land and Elijah also is in the land. So wakati irudi kuripoti hivyo, Mungu akajishusha aka akashuka mwenye ndo akakuja kuchukua Musa. So the dead even fears the mightiest servants of the Lord. It knows who they are. And that's why ilisimama. So actually that was a repetition of kitu ilifanyika many years ago. Anauliza wewe ni worthy than Adam the first person. Kasema Adam ulimpea simple rule ya kutokula matunda lakini akakula. Mimi nini nimefanya? The Bible hiyo uh, hiyo nini ilikuwa inaandika hiyo ilikuwa inasema maombi ya Musa ilitingiza dunia na bingo. So death even fear this. We don't know who, who they are by the way. We don't know. And that is Moses. Ongeza Elijah in one person. You can tell me who that person is. He's not among us. Sasa nimefika pale. Kifo inamjua inasimama na mimi nimesimama. Sioni akiongea lakini naanza kusikia hiyo sauti. Kwa ikilia kwa kichwa changu. Inaniambia, didn't I tell you? Didn't we warn you? Didn't I and didn't we? Je, si tulikuonya? Si tulikwambia? Sauti inaniambia hivyo. Ani wakati unaambiwa kitu na mtu, nilikuwa napeana example ya msichana. Unajua wasichana ninatumiaga wasichana kwa sababu saa zingine matokeo ya dhambi inakuwaga dhahiri. Anaweza wenda apate mimba alafu mimba tunaona. So ukimwambia dada wachana ushirati, kuna kitu inasema maisha ni yangu, chugulika na maisha yako. So akienda akipata mimba, akutane na wewe akikuona hata inamanga ama anapotea. Kuna kitu inaitwa shame. Sasa wakati nabia na ananiambia si nilikuonya. Si nilikwambia, si tulikuonya. Sasa mimi naangalia chini. Kwa sababu ya aibu na hawako wanakaa watu wanacheka. Their face was so serious. Macho yao ni kali kabisa. Sasa mimi huyu mtu wako nyuma naye akaniconfirmia actually these are the two servants of the Lord. Kwa sababu aliniambia na Kiswahili kwanza si ungesikiza huyu na ungekuwa hapa. Yaani in another short word kifo inaniambia shetani mwenyewe anakuambia huyu ni nabii wa Mungu. Lakini sasa ndio anakuambia but he's telling you he's confirming to you but at the wrong place. Kwa sababu ningejuanga hivyo nikiwa mbona hakuwa anakuja kwa ndoto but now sasa anakuja sasa saa ile nimekufa siku yangu ya kukufa imefika. So upande wao wa kulia kwa manabii wa kulia kulikuwa na mlango. Hiyo nje ilikuwa inapeleka kwa mlango. Mlango nyebamba sana. Sana. Hiyo mlango ilikuwa ya mbao. Ni mbao mzee but ni mbao strong. Boka mbili za hit by one. Nizimejenga hiyo mlango but strong woods. Alafu katikati ya ile ile mlango kuna kamwanya. You can see unajua mlango ya mbao iko na mwanya. Alafu hiyo mlango ilikuwa imefungwa na kifuri kubwa furi kubwa ovoish kifuri na kama duara sasa hii mlango the fact that ilikuwa imefungwa hiyo hata bila kuambiwa na mtu unajua ukiona mlango inafungwa it means watu hawaingiagi hapo ovyo ovyo nilikuwa nauliza mtu mwingine tukiwa mahali nikauliza nikaitsimamisha mmoja nikamwambia acha nikuulize swali ukienda tu karibu ama ujue hiyo mlango kuna mtu anaenda kuingia unafunga na kifuli akaniambia no unarudishaga tu mlango the fact that ilikuwa imefungwa ilikuwa inamaanisha hapo hapa ingiwi hiyo 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 na ni nyembamba lakini katikati usisahau mbao inawasilisha msalaba mzee wa Yesu katikati nikaona mwanya Alafu sasa nikaanza kuona miale ya mwangaza ambao ulikuwa unatoka huko ndani. Wapendwa, Paulo alisema ya kwamba akilinganisha mambo yenye amewekewa, aliona mambo ya hapa duniani ikaa takataka. In some nini he says mafi. Consider them as mafi. Mateso ya hapa duniani. Wakati niliona ile mwangaza. I don't know if that is heaven. I don't know. I won't tell you I know. But kama bingu iko hivyo. Wapendwa ni heli tungangane tungangane tuingie binguni. Pale mahali kuna pendeza. It was so so beautiful. Just 
aggrieves kuona tu ile tu miale ya mwangazi ilikuwa so comforting i wish i entered there hai ningekuwa na wangojea ningezingatia utakatifu sahihi ningekuwa na wangojea huko it was so so beautiful lakini imefungwa but uzuri ufunguzi kwa hapo upande huu mwingine wa kushoto kuna njia pia inaelekea pale lakini hapa kuko na milango mlango mlango ni gate this is a gate ile ni mlango hii ni kama gate funguka huko na huko kubwa gari mbili zinaweza pita hapo at once if I, I, i remember very well kubwa mlango kubwa lakini sasa hii mlango imefunguliwa ijefungwa na ni ya chuma kumaanisha mlango ikiwa imefunguliwa watu wanaingia hapo kila saa kila dakika baada ya saa watu wengi wanakufa tunaenda kuomba atiwekwe pema peponi lakini watu wengi wanaenda jihanao wenye hawakujihanda hiyo mlango ilikuwa kubwa alafu ndani ya mlango hapo kuna bonde alafu kando ya bonde kidogo nikaona mlima mlima ya moshi na hiyo moshi haiko inakaa hii moshi ya kawaida na ma, ma, na kisia sisi wote tulishaiona mawingu ya mvua that dark crowd inakaa hivyo nyeusi kabisa but katikati kati ya hiyo moshi kuna miale ya moto some sparks of fire pa 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 ndalia hivyo sasa wakati mimi niliona hivi nikaanza kusikia manduru usisahau theology wangu nilimuuliza jehanamu ni ya milele akaniambia hapana jehanamu tutachomeka siku moja nikamuuliza na ukikufa unaendaga wapi akaniambia unaendaga mahali panaitwa pagatori unaenda unangoja siku Yesu atarudi atachukua ngano achome makapi that was simple to me yani naweza fanya usherati siku moja nichomeke siku moja hata fizisi anachomangwa so that i could take sasa the fact that aliniambia si forever ili nifurahishe sasa nikaanza kusikia manduru kwa hii moshi ndani na ni kama hizo nduru zinatoka deep na sasa sisikii sauti nasikia echo watu wengi walikuwa nalia wengi sauti mingi sijui ni za watu wangapi but i can tell you thousands and thousands are there a lot of souls are there such lakini niko comforted kwa sababu najua naingia pale siku moja ingia pale tu siku moja. So, Mungu akasababisha nikaona marafiki zangu wawili walikufa kitao. Wakatoka hapo juu. Na vile wametoka sasa wanaangalia tu hivi. Ni kama watu wako na haraka nikawa nakimbishwa na mtu. Waniambia kuja twende ukifika hapa hakuna kurudi. Actually walikuwa nasema kenye Abraham alikuwa naambia ule mtu wa the, the rich man ya kwamba ukifika hapa hata mtu atuwezi ya mtuma mtu afufuke you can tell the rich man akitubu makosa ya, ya ndugu zake walio alikuwa akiomba msamaha yao akiomba watumiwe mtu alikuwa amejaribu kutubu yake ukienda kutubia mtu unakuwa umetubu yako so labda alitubu ikashindikana so pale ukifika jayanamu hakuna kurudi manabii wa bwana wamesema jayanamu si mahali pa kurekebishwa tabia it's not a rehabilitation center this is a permanent place hii jela Jela utashikwa tu ambie umefungwa mwaka alafu ufike pale kuna kitu inaitagwa e, tabia ikibadilika president anaweza kuwa na sloti yake ya watu wanataka kuachilie wangu ukiwaambia huyu amekuwa mzuri aachilie At least jela uko na hope Jehanamu hakuna tumaini ukienda umeenda Unajua wengi umeanza kufikiria watu wenyewe wenye walikufa na wako sawa na Bwana Hakuna kuombea ulale pema peponi ukienda umeenda sasa marafiki zangu wanakuja wananiambia kuja twende ukifika hapa kuna kurudi. Hao watu na waona kuanzia hapa mpaka hapa. But kuanzia hapa kurudi ni skeletons. Na bado wako kijivujivu. Na wamekondeana. Amekuja twende tukifika hapa kuna kurudi. Na anakuambia ni kama mtu ataenda kupigwa kwenye anarudi. Ni kama mtu ataenda kuteseka. Hawakuwa na kaa vizuri. Niliwahurumia. Mimi nilikuwa niende huko lakini niliwahurumia. Sasa wakati hiyo ndo nikaanza kupata kitu ndio flashbacks. Nikajipata nimerudi ulimwenguni sorry na nikajipata na jiona watu wakiniona kwa sanduku. Kwetu kuna hiyo kitu before uziko wanafungua sanduku kidogo kuna kio na sijui wanaonanga nini because 
ni kama wanataka kuconfirm ni huyu wanaona wanaona wanapita so naangalia mama yangu na ndugu zangu watu wetu wananiona na wananipita mama yangu anapita ameshikiliwa jua nalia kijana yake amekufa mimi pia najiona alafu kidogo kidogo naona msichana msichana amevalia tishati ya white ameshuka manywele anasoma uology kuna ile kitu inaandikagwa karatasi ya, ya hadithi ya hayati ee wanaanzaga pale mbele wanaweka cha kutumaini sina wimbo wa kwanza na mwisho ni salama roho ni mwangu i know you know those things ona wanapeana hadithi na hii hadithi kila wakati wanadanganya but nashukuru Mungu kwa hii huduma nimeattend mazishi mingi but nime notice hata kwa mazishi wanaambiaga watu ukweli lakini kule kwingine kuna kitu kwanza wanapenda kuandika mimi ingeandikwa ningezikwa na kanisa ya mamangu anglican ingeandika kahuri alienda wapi akafanya akafanya hadi dakika ya mwisho akashikwa na gocho ya muda mfupi akakufa akikimbishwa hospitali wangeambia watu alikula bangi akafanya nini akakufa na sema hiyo so wanadanganyanga so najiona msichana aki, akisoma uology yangu and then he is telling another boy she is telling another boy that huyu kijana amekufa na miaka 26 imagine amekufa na miaka 26 na naona kabisa hiyo ni mimi wanasoma adibi yangu yani kama bwana hange ingilia hiyo siku ningelala kwa fridge singelala kwa kitanda yako hiyo kitanda unapenda unakataa kwenda kesho siku moja utalala kwa fridge But ni yeri ulale kwa fridge na ukoe mtakatifu kwa sababu nafsi yako itakuwa imeenda mahali pazuri. Sasa mimi wakati nasikia hivyo naona ni mimi wanaongea. Inamaanisha labda utajipata kwa mazishi yako siku moja. I don't know. I tend to think how watu walikuwa kwa tane ni zile soul bado wazijizikwa juu labda ukizikwa ndio sasa unaingishwa kwa ile sasa nini. Unazuhusiwa kuje uone mazishi yako. Unaona watu wakidanganya vile ulikuwa mzuri na ulikufa ukiiba. I don't know but mimi nilijiona kwa mazishi yangu. Na marafiki zangu hiyo msichana vile alikuwa amesuka nyuele it tells you it's the kind of people nilikuwa natembea nao wangekuja kunizika. Na wangekuja watoke huko na hako anasema kama mtu analia. No, wangekuja wa, kwetu kama road trip na wapige picha. Na wakule kwa mazishi yangu na waende. Na wanisahau na waendelee na maisha yao. Maisha itaendelea bila wewe ukiwa na kama huyu huko. Sasa wakati ule wakati nimeona hiyo nikaenda sasa huko. Nikajua sitarudia kitu kilifanyika pale shamba la Edeni. Wakati walipatikana kwa dhambi walijaribu kujijustify. Asi kujijustify hivyo ni huyu mwanamke ulinipea. Mwanamke anasema ni nyoka. Nikajua hapa si manabii nimejua ni wa ukweli yeye. Si amenikonfirmia. Kitu nitafanya nitafanya kitu nitwa repentance. Repentance ni kitu ya maana sana. Toba ni kitu ya maana sana. But toba ni wakati umekosana na ndugu yako unaenda unamwambia woi ndugu nilikukosea nisamehe. Ukiwa uhai. Kuna toba utatubu hata jehanamu let me tell you I tend to think and you will concur with me kulingana na vile huyo tajiri alikuwa naomba ndugu zake wakambi hata yeye alijaribu kutubu. Jehanamu kuko na serious repentance na in the church. Watu wanajaribu kutubu but time their time is ilienda hakuna wile watarudi wa, wa, wafanye warekebisha wa no hata mimi ni golden chance nasikiaga nikienda mahali watu wanasema kauri kauri we are happy to see you i'm not the me some zingine nachukuaga i'm the one who is happy to see you kwa sababu nyinyi mulifaa nyinyi mulikuwa time yenu bado inaendelea mimi naishi bonus kuna kitu inaitwa bonus yani ilikuwa imeisha nikaongezea so mimi ukiniambia you are happy to see mimi na mimi am happy to see you because wewe ni wewe Mungu amependa sana nikuje nikwambie kwa sababu mimi I had to run the hard way ndio wewe ukuje land the soft way na siku moja uandae mapito wingi sasa nimerudi huko nikaanza kutubu kwa sababu since 2004 nabii ametufunza toba 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 nikaanza kutubu nilitubu dhambi hata vitu ni siku anajuaga ni dhambi I was telling people mimi siko ajua mapua inaweza fanya dhambi but litubu mpaka dhambi ya mapua. Eh unaweza nusia mtu tu hivi usikie ananuka jasho ama ananuka vibao mchukie. It, it is sin. Mpaka dhambi ya makucha. Unalea kucha ndio uentice people and then people tells you you have beautiful nails and thank you thank you. Ume, ume labda umeangusha huyo mtu amekutamani juu ya kucha. 
nilitubu mpaka dhambi ya makucha nilitubwa ina zote za dhambi dhambi ya hata majirani hata watoto i used I, nilikuwa na wataja kwa majina i repented a serious repentance nadhania nilimaliza kila dhambi yenye ni possible kwa mwanadamu sauti kaniambia kitu hiko katika kitabu cha Luka 20:38 eh tuwekea hapo pale Luka 20:38 sasa sasa hiyo natubu inasema he is not the god of the dead but of the living for to him or alive sasa hiyo maandiko inasema yes Mungu alio kufa ni Mungu alio hai kwa sababu kwake wote wako hai sasa mimi natubu alafu nasikia sauti na niambia i am the god of the living ni kama inarudia ile maneno i am the god of the living Once you are here there is no mercy. Yours was 26. Yaani mimi ni Mungu wa walio hai, ukifika hapa hakuna rehema. Miaka ulipewa ni shina sita. Na kurudisha nyuma pale nilikuwa naambia Mungu nataka nisikie sauti yako. Ole kwako wewe unaitaga Mungu na mwambie nataka nisikie sauti yako. Atisema na moyo wangu, na moyo wako yuko straight. Sasa amekuja kuniongelesha ndio but ananiambia I am the God of the living. Once you are here there is no mercy. He was 26. Yaani ananiconfirmia kwenye msichana amesema kwa huko kwa mazishi yangu kwamba miaka yangu ilikuwa 26 na nimekufa. Connect the dot. Ule alikuwa anasema amekufa na 26. Na ananiambia he was 26. Sasa nikajua repentance ijifanye. Sisi wana biashara kuna kitu inaitwa bargain game eh? Bargaining game. Eh hey, sisi si wale ukiambiwa kitu ni 500 unasema okay unaanzaga mimi niko na 200 so naye anakuambia hata unaanzaga 100 mimi niko na 100 anasema ah ongeza kitu so mnakutania hapo around 250 itwa bargaining nikakumbuka scripture sasa sasa hiyo nilikuwa naikumbuka as a story hata sijui ni scripture gani nikakumbuka kuna mwezi mmoja ukisoma katika kitabu cha Luke 23 verse 40 to 41 E, ni vyema tunaisoma tu Luke 23 verse 40 41 Na leo mnisamehe sisomi Biblia asoma pale So inasema but the other criminal rebuked him Do not don't you fear God he said Since you are under the same sentence uh-huh, We are punished justly for we are getting what our deeds deserved Deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Mm-hmm. Alafu akamwambia nini? Then he said, "Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom." Yesu akamjibu nini? Jesus answered him, "Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise." Kwangu tu hiyo maneno inatosha kuniambia huyo mwizi tutamkuta mbinguni. Na tu hiyo mwizi alikuwa ananyonga watu. Mimi kwangu vile nafikiri anga juu. Mwizi ni mtu alikuwa ananyonga watu, si inaitwa inaitwa thief alikuwa ananyonga watu kuibia watu. Sasa mimi nilikuwa naona kuna kitu inaitwa self justification. Unaona huyo mwizi hakufaa, we ndo unafaa. Na Wakristo wako na hiyo kitu ni mimi, mimi. Sasa mimi nilikuwa naona huyo mwizi hakufaa kuingia mbinguni. Sasa unauliza Mungu, mbona ulisamea ule mwizi? I don't know how vile Mungu alichukulia statement yangu ni kama ilikuwa na point kwa sababu yenyewe alikuwa mwizi. Then I was told. Ni kama alitaka kunionyesha we ndo mwizi mkubwa. Even if you are to forgive you, what of your tithe? Unajua ukikosa kutoa tithe wewe ni mwizi. Sasa so, nilikuwa naenda kuleta kesi ya mwizi wa kunyonga watu physically mimi nimeibia Mungu spiritual. Kaniambia what of your tithe? Nakumbuka ile nilisema Januari nitatoa. Wakati alisema hivyo. Nikajua sasa hapa sina ujanja mwingine. Kwa sababu gani? Dhambi unaweza tubu. Lakini hiyo kusema nitatoa 10000 alafu ikifika sande uonekani. Asiye ni pesa una, nile tena umefikiria umeenda ukafikiria ah nitoe mbona unatotea. Hiyo sadaka hiyo unalipwa una 1100 na uliomba Mungu kama mimi ukinipea kazi nitakuwa na kutolea fungu lako la kumi nitasimama nita na kazi yako. Alafu ikifika mwisho wa mwezi utoi hiyo si ya kutubu hiyo ni ya kutoa e. sadaka na tithe hiyo si ya kutubu hiyo ni ya kutoa since you can repent but tithe you don't repent you give 
Sasa wakati aliniambia hivyo, ujue sasa hata ndugu yangu akaenda achukue hiyo pesa yote aipeane yenye ilikuwa kwa account yenye libaki, aipeane kwa kanisa. It cannot be accounted as my deed. Itasemekana ni yeye alifanya hiyo. Hii unatoanga kwa moyo. Hiyo ni wewe upeleke. Uende kwa ile kikapu yetu ya the widows and the orphans, utoe, uende kwa sadaka, uende kwa 10% utoe. Sasa mimi sikuwa nimetoa. Na sasa nimekutana na hii swali na sasa hiyo niko in subconscious, uh, subconscious state so siwezi toa. Hata siwezi shika simu. Na ndio nimekuambia kitu unaweza fanya saa hii fanye saa hizi ujui ke? kesho. Wakati aliniambia hivyo nikajua sina ujanja mwingine. Yangu imeisha. Na nikakubali tu. Kwa sababu sasa that is where you say now it's okay. But nilikuwa naangalia yangu naona mtu hajeacha hata sina legacy sina si, hakuna kitu nilikuwa nimeacha. Hata hivi hakuna mtu labda ningeacha nimeimpact kwa life. Be careful ujui siku yako inafika lini. Eh hey, jiulize ukienda nini utakuwa umefanyia Mungu? Utapatikana kwa upande wa marafiki za Mungu ama utapatikana kwa maadui zake? Sasa naenda jia namu. Nimeona marafiki zangu moja alikufa 2021 mwingine 2019. It means si ya siku moja nilidanganywa na theologist. Naenda kuteketea milele. Nilitamani ni kwa hata chokora. Yaani nilalange pale niwaombage pesa mkipita mkitaka mnipe but nirekebishe njia. Nilitamani hata nisivaizi magwana, nisikae maisha mzuri, nisipake pafu mzuri, nikae tu maisha tu ya kawaida but ningangane niingie. Nirekebishe njia zangu ninge. But wakati nilikuwa nalia hata sikuwa kwa sababu nilikuwa cold vest nimekufa, nilikuwa tunaomba nifunguliwe ile mlango. Lakini hiyo mlango hata wewe jiulize ingefunguliwa aje na kutana na Peter ananiambia hapana, mimi nilisubiriwa upside down. Alafu mimi naenda naambia Petero, bwana mimi nilienda sherehe nikakula bangi nikakufa. It make sense. It tells you singe ingi mlango. Lakini nashukuru bwana. Kwa sababu wakati nilikuwa nimeke, nimepiga magoti. Sasa nilipiga magoti kuna ile kupiga magoti ya kugive up. Kuna ile kupiga magoti ya kuomba na kuna ile unapiga tu na surrender. Now anything let it happen. Manabii wako pale. Jamaa wa sururu wako nyuma. Mimi naye nimepiga nimekosa tumaini na lia tu. Manabii nilikuwa nafuata manabii mwenye nilikuwa nimejiekea. Wale wanatokaga sasa kana ni wanaenda kutafuta msaada Misri. Jeshi la Farao likusaidia. Ni nilikuwa hata mimi na kamnabii kangu. Nikiwa kwa hii dunia. Kaona huyo jamaa, a renowned man in Kenya by the way. And he's swing many kaona hiyo jamaa huko. But nashukuru Mungu ameanza ku expose eh. Ameanza ku expose. Wale pole tu. Naona jamaa. Kwa ile moshi kwa jehanamu huko na manduru zinaendelea. Ame ako juu. The angle he was standing could tell me huyu mtu anaongoza watu wengi jehanamu. Na watu wanafuata hiyo njia. The only person I was confirmed ungesikiza huyu ungekuwa hapa the man of God. Huyo munabii hange nisaidia. Batali hange nisaidia. Sasa wakati niko pale. Jamaa amesikia now it is called the verdict. Amefikia sasa amepiga nyundo Yesu ameniambia yako ilikuwa 26. Jamaa wa kifo ndio huyo anakuja sasa. Na sasa akuji na haraka is coming slow. I don't know ni ka distance ilizonga kwa sababu nilikuwa naona tu anakuja baada ya So nilikuwa na nimepiga magoti na angalia nyuma na angalia mbele. Naangalia nabii na angalia nyuma. Ni e sasa naangalia huko na angalia huko. Jamaa anakuja tu. Ni kama sasa alikuwa akuja anipige the last blow and then throw me to hell. But hii mkono ilikuwa imenyoshwa hivi. Imekunjwa hivi. Kakunjuka hivi. Alafu hiyo fungu ilikuwa hapa ikakuja kwa mkono. Alafu akai hold na grip hivi the power hivi manabii wa bwana sasa wakati alishika tu fungu pap shtuka ile unashtuka nikajipata niko hospitali 
comecei com o I tend to think I tend to think na wazia ya kwamba the, the man of God ya kwamba manabii wa Mungu looked at me waliniangalia I looked at this boy wakaangalia mvulana huyu kijana huyu him out of mass kutokana tu na huruma and they said wakasema I cancel premature death in this one. I cancel premature death in this one. Ninafutilia mbali kifo cha mapema kwa huyu. It's like they told the spirit of death. Ndikana kwamba waliambia kile I know the verdict has been reached that he deserved to go to hell. Najua kwamba hatima yake imepitishwa kwamba anastahili kwenda jehanamu. But there is somebody in Kakamega. Lakini kuna yeye mtu Kakamega who has not who is not serious with salvation ambaye hajamaanisha katika wokovu and need to hear this na anahitaji kusikia hii and i love them so so much na nawapenda sana sana people from shamahoho watu kutoka shamahoho people yes. from shinyalu watu kutoka shinyalu people from all over kakamega watu kutoka sehemu zote kakamega i think this boy has a task na wazia kijana huyu ana jukumu you are not taking him today not today Hautamchukua leo si Let leo. him go to Kakamega. Wacha aende Kakamega. Aingie huko showground. Aingie huko showground. Aambie mtu, aambie mtu ya kwamba Jehanamu is real. Kwamba Jehanamu ni kweli. And yeah, heaven is real. Na vile vile mbinguni ni halisi. And I am the servant of God. Na mimi ni mtumishi wa Mungu. Who has been sent to prepare the way. Ambaye ametumwa kuiandaa. And no any other one. Na kuna mwingine. In the land. Katika nchi there is no not even in the land in the world hakuna yote katika ulimwengu mzima tena if you are expecting for another one for your information there is no anybody coming for your rescue this is the only voice iwapo unamtarajia au kumngojea mwingine kukujulisha tu ni kwamba hakuna mwingine hii ndio sauti ya pekee only voice sauti ya pekee that has been sent to prepare the church ambayo imetumwa kwa ajili ya kuliandaa kanisa let me tell you because the voices are still fresh in my mind wacheni niwaambie kwa kuwa sauti hizo bado zing Hell is not a place to be. Jehanamu sima alipakuwa. Lead my lips. Hell is not a place to be. Jehanamu sima hali pakuwa. People are crying there. Watu huko wanalia. Tafadhali lilia Mungu wakati uko na muda. Lilia Mungu ukiwa bado uko na muda. Imambo ya uvuguvugu as a youth in the church as a woman in the church watcha. Mambo ya uvuguvugu kama kijana kama mama kanisani waachana nayo. This thing of being a blackmailer watcha. Mambo haya ya kupaka tope manabii wa Bwana wacha. Because I'm telling you and I'm assuring you will meet them at the gate. Kwa sababu ninakuambia na ninakuhakikishia kwamba utakutana nao. It is dreadful to fall on their other side, to know their other side. Ni jambo la kutisha kujikuta katika upande wao. Somebody they had mercy on me. Kwa basi mimi walikanihurumia. Right now I could be burning in hell for almost 5 months. Sasa hivi ningekuwa nateketea jehanamu miezi kama tano hivi sasa. There you don't have an uncle mwenye anaweza kukusaidia. No your parent there. Hapo hakuna mjomba wako ama mzazi ambaye anaweza kukusaidia. You are there alone. Uko hapo peke yako. I came back nikarudi because of you. Kwa sababu yako. And I thank the Lord. Na namshukuru Mungu because today I'm alive. Kwa sababu leo niko hai. But lastly, lakini hatimaye there are some resolution we should make. Kuna mambo fulani maamuzi fulani sharti uyafanye. I want us to read the book of uh, Tumemaliza. I want to give you four tips and then we read some resolutions there. Nataka niwapeni maandiko fulani ni kwamba tuwe tusome maamuzi fulani hapo. There are things i want to emphasize kuna mambo nataka angalau kusisitiza number one. jambo la kwanza is about bad company ni kuhusiana na watu ama marafiki wabaya tafadhali 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 kuna marafiki wabaya kama una rafiki wabaya those who are not reading you to the kingdom of god waachana nao ambao hawakusaidii kuingia katika ufalme wa mungu waachana number two is about typing ya pili ni kuhusiana na kutoa fungu la kumi. typing tumesema unatoa kutoa fungu la kumi tumesema unatoa hiyo si ya kutubu hiyo si ya kutubu another thing jambo jingine on that line of tithing katika mkondo huo wa kutoa fungu la kumi you have three types of tithing 
uko na aina tatu ya kutoa zaka there's that uh, physical tithing that involve finance yeah. kuna kuna kule kutoa zaka kwa kawaida kuna zo, kuna kuhusisha fedha e, the first fruits and such mazao ya kwanza na mambo kama hayo and we have another tithing yenye iko katika kitabu cha Romans Romans 12 verse number 1 it says alafu kuna kutoa kwingine kwa zaka katika Warumi 12 mstari wa kwanza ambapo inasema na wasihi mtoe mili yenu kama dhabihu iliyo hai kwamba na wasihi mkatoe mili yenu therefore i urge you brothers and sisters in the view of god's mercy to offer your body as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to god this is for this is your true and proper worship now anasema kwa hiyo you, Okay, so kwa hiyo ndugu zangu na wasi kwa rehema zake Mungu itoeni mili yenu iwe dhabihu iliyo hai takatifu na inayompendeza Mungu. Hii ndio ibada yenu yenye maana. That is a tithe of your body. Hiyo ni kutoa zaka kutoa mwili wako. There are those who are not working students. Kuna wale ambao hawafanyi kazi wana. But they have their bodies. Lakini wako na mili yao. Others are cohabiting with boyfriends and girlfriends. Wengine wanahusiana katika ma, ma, mapenzi ama mahusiano ya kiwashirika. Others are in the church on Sunday but in the night they are club bouncers. They are using their bodies because they have muscular bodies. They are using them to be bouncers. Wengine mchana wako kanisani lakini usiku wanaenda kupigana kama bouncers. That is sin. Use your body to glorify God. It's another form of tithing. It's a sacrifice to God. Hiyo ni dhambi. Tumia mwili wako kumtukuza Mungu. Utoe kama dhabihu. Tuko na nyingine inaitwa our tithing. Tithing ya masaa. Kuna nyingine inaitwa kutoa zaka ya masaa. We have 24 hours in a day. Tunayo masaa 24 katika siku. 2.4 that is 2 hours 24 minutes belong to the Lord. Masaa mawili na dakika 40 katika masaa hayo 24 ni ya Bwana. Ya unaweza uliza nikufanya nini you can pray you can read the Bible you can evangelize Jesus. Waweza soma Biblia waweza omba waweza fanya uinjilisti kwa masaa hayo. But at least 2 hours and 24 minutes be found serving God. Angalau masaa mawili dakika 40 upatikane unamtumikia Mungu. That is another form of tithing. Another thing is about the, the positions of the mightiest prophets. Hiyo ni hali nyingine ya kutoa zaka. Na kitu kingine ni nafasi wanayoshikilia manabii wakuu wa Mungu. Number one, they are central for your entry. Kwanza kabisa wametumwa kwa ajili ya kuingia kwako. I've said you are not expecting any other one. Nimesema hakuna mwingine kitu tunayemtarajia. They are the last ones. Wao ndio wa mwisho kabisa. The last lines of uh, the last line of the prophets now. Wao ndio kiwango cha mwisho kabisa cha manabii. If you don't listen to them, usipowasikiza wao, you are going to hell. Basi utambulia jehanamu. They say we are judging but I'm telling you go to hell. Wanasema labda una hukumu lakini nitakwambia ukweli ya kwamba utaishia jehanamu. In hell in heaven, ukule mbinguni. The way to heaven does not have many formulas like mathematics. Njia ya kwenda mbinguni haina formula nyingi kama hisabati. That you lose Yesu atongaleni wewe jamaa atongaleni ili udwekesa sijui na nani tena atufike no you will not use them. Ya kwamba sijui utatumia nani sijui utumie Yesu atongaleni sijui utumie nani ndio ufike hapa. The formula is this. Na hiyo mtindo wa kuingia mbinguni ni repentance, toba, holiness, utakatifu and righteousness na uhaki all times. Masaa yote kila saa kila wakati that is the formula hiyo ndio mbinu ama mtindo wa kuingia mbinguni another thing they are too they were telling me did it i warn you did it we jambo jingine ni kwamba ni wawili walikuwa wananiambia je si nilikuwa nakwambia si nilikuwa na si tulikuwa si nilikuwa nakwambia na si tulikwambia another thing they are the beholders of the keys jambo jingine ni kwamba wao ndio wanaubeba wanau beba ufunguo Yesu aliambia Peter katika kitabu cha Matthew chapter number 16 verse 19 we are not reading alimwambia i give you keys that whatever you bind on earth in heaven shall be bound Peter was just a disciple Petro yeye alikuwa tu mwanafunzi na Yesu akamwambia kwamba nakupa funguo kwamba chochote utakacho kifunga hapa duniani vile vile mbinguni kitafungwa Peter was just a disciple na Petro alikuwa tu mwanafunzi wa Yesu. And if you read the book of Acts chapter number 1 verse number 10 you find that one day these disciples were discouraged they were looking intently up as Jesus was going up. Na ukisoma matendo ya mitume sura ya kwanza mstari wa kumi, wanafunzi wa Yesu siku moja wakashushika moyo kabisa wakati Yesu alikuwa anaenda mbinguni wakakaza macho yao. And God sent the two to come and confront them and tell the men of Galilee. 
Alafu kisha Mungu akatuma hawa manabii wawili wakakutana na wanafunzi wa Yesu na wakasema so, enyi watu wa Galilaya the same Jesus you are looking up amepelekwa binguni will come back the same way that's where the, the coming of Messiah the, ilianza kuhubiriwa sasa kwamba hawa huyu Yesu mnayekazia macho yake akienda mbinguni vivyo hivyo alivyoenda ndivyo atakavyorudi na the, hapo ndipo kurudi kwa masia kulianza kuhubiriwa the fact that they came so la kwamba walikuja tells you they are greater than they, than Peter inakwambia wao ni wakubwa kumliko Petro kama Peter alipewa ufunguo jiulize hao wame wako na nini they have greater power wanazo nguvu kuu kabisa another thing jambo jingine is about the devotion lukewarmness kwanza ni kuhusiana na uvuguvugu tafadhali tafadhali usikue vuguvugu unachukiza Yesu sana unanukia vibaya mbele za Yesu you just choose today who you'll serve uchague tu leo hii ni nani utakayemtumikia if god be god let us serve god kama mungu die mungu basi tumtumikie yeye hiyo kristo ya double double you are you are you are uko huku na uko huku ukristo ya kuwa huku na upande huu pia it is sin and detestable before god ni dhambi na ni machukizo mbele za mungu and last na hatimaye is about the service and devotion to the service of god inahusiana na kutumika na kujitolea katika kutumika kwa bwana kuna watu wanakuja kanisa hakuna kitu wanafanyanga let me tell you that is dangerous na hiyo ilikuwa moja wapo ilikuwa inanipeleka jihanamu hiyo ni hatari kabisa kuja tu kanisani na hakuna kitu unafanya na ni moja wapo iliyokuwa inanipeleka jihanamu why because kwa nini kwa sababu wakati unaketi for example uh, when a, ni translator or a worshiper amefanya dhambi wakati wakati labda umeketi ona wa translator wakati wanaabudu na yeye amefanya dhambi she will be rebuked or he will be rebuked rebuked At, atakemewa hapo hapo but anybody who comes to church and sit lakini yeyote anayekuja kanisani na not, akae tu not doing anything na asifanye chochote kanisani in fact if, even if we can hear that he did a sin we cannot even hatuwezi mwambia kidogo sababu hakuna mahali utamsimamisha hata tukisikia kwamba alifanya dhambi itakuwa ngumu kumwambia chochote kwa sababu hakuna mahali ambapo utamsimamisha penye alikuwa anatumika after all he does not serve hata hivyo hatumiki popote but service to the lord is so key lakini kutumikia Bwana ni muhimu kabisa. The man of God has said that the Lord will come to take out, to rapture his friends from the hour of trial. Manabii wa Bwana wametufunza kwamba Mungu atakuja kuwanyakua marafiki zake kutokana na hiyo saa ya jaribio. Friends of Jesus are those who serve him. Marafiki wa Yesu ni wale tu wanaomtumikia. Those who serve him. Wanaomtumikia. Are you serving Jesus? Je, unamtumikia Yesu? When they were tending the sheep, wakati walikuwa wanachunga kondoo, the wise men wale watu wenye promised wale watu wenye hekima kutoka mashariki malaika wakatokea the angels appeared and they told them Jesus has been born malaika wakatokea kisha wakawaambia kwamba Yesu amezaliwa David when he was tending sheep akamwagiliwa mafuta alafu akamwagiliwa mafuta Daudi Daudi Musa alikuwa akichunga kondoo Musa wakati huo alikuwa anachunga kondoo watu wengi hata Yusufu ndio auzwe alikuwa bado anachunga kondoo everybody was found in a service angalau kila mmoja wao alipatikana anatumika when you don't serve vyo basi usipotumika unahuzunisha Mungu basi huamhuzunisha please mungu. please please tafadhali we have a lot of departments in the church kuna idara nyingi kanisani kwanza hii kanisa tuko na department zingine hata zingine like handlers kwa mfano idara ya watu wa kushiriki yani unaweza okay unaweza shindwa kuhubiri lakini kupiga makofi kuza unaweza shindwa jamii kukua tu handla kupiga like yani kupiga tu kile he kushangilia bwana utashindwa haya tuseme kelele imekushinda sasa kupanguza viti kuwa asha tu kusmailia watu na kwambia enda pale itakushinda will it kushinda ndio tunaweza kosa kuimba sisi wote but ku decorate hilo kuambia ushika kitambaa hivi kunja hivi itakushinda Ah hiyo inaweza kushinda. Sasa kuna nyingine inaitwa Morning Arabian Evangelism. Kwenda tu pale nini Shinyalu ama hapa Kakamega unaambia mtu sasa unajua kuna Yesu. Before uende kazi unahubiri itakushinda. Haya hiyo imekushinda. Kuna nyingine inaitwa Intercessor. Kuna mpaka waombezi. Wengine wanaitwa Willing Women, yani wanalilia Bwana. Wao mama wa mbolezaji. Itakushinda tu kulilia Bwana. Tuko na vitu mingi za kulilia Bwana. Itakushinda aiezi kushinda just find a department in the church angalau utafuta idara kanisani ingia uingie patikana mahali tu hii mambo ya kukaa chini is so dangerous the devil anatafutaga mtu akao isolated anakushika anakuua na kumaliza but when you serve the lord 
Lakini unapomtumikia Mungu. You compel the Lord to stand and fight for you. Unamlazimisha ama kumfanya Mungu basi asimame na kutetee. Sasa, si nikimaliza ni watu ndio wanajua wataniuliza, "Oh, sasa wewe ni nini ulibadilika?" Mimi nilibadilika. Eh, ju watu wanataka kuniuliza, "Sasa wewe okay, ulienda ukafanya hizo, ni nini lilibadilika?" Eh, you know people want to know before and after. Watu wanataka wajue hali yako kabla na hmm. baada, baadaye. Sasa mimi nilikuwa na marafiki wengi nikafuta namba nilikuwa na namba over 600 nikafuta nikabaki na namba 30 na hizo 30 vile zilibaki ni za watu wenye singefuta namba kama ya chief huwezi futa si ati ni mnasaidiana but huwezi futa unaona so amongst these 30 ni zile tu ya mama ya ndugu ile tu huwezi futa lakini tungeangalia sawa ningebaki na namba 5 when nilibakisha na hizo namba the life was so boring maisha ilikuwa mbaya kabisa kwangu nilikuwa naomba Mungu nipende ama hakuna mtu wale walikuwa naniuliza umekula umeamka the girlfriends niliwaambia tuachane kuanzia leo it's over and then when i returned now to god nikaanza kutembea nikienda mahali kama hapa naambiwa andika namba yangu e, mimi naitwa overseer dagra shikuku andika sasa sasa hivi kuna namba ya mauvasia DAB watu wengi wa maana and these are the people when hata ukimpigia ana praise the lord unaendeleaje people who are helping you to enter watu ambao angalau wanakusaidia kwamba upate kuingia mbinguni Mungu ametusaidia eh mpaka tunajiona na AIG ningejiona na wapi wa na AIG assistant inspector general ule mdogo wake Rosemary Kuraro kwa samburu tukakutana na mwenyako mdogo wake yaji mwingine tu. Eh, sasa tunajuana na watu kama wao. Sasa nikishikwa na polisi na wamea najua yaji. Haleluya. Nikienda Masinde Morino niko na professor pale niko na lecturer pale namjua. I know a lot of people now who are beneficial people than those I had. Ninao watu wengi sana ambao ninawajua wa muhimu wa manufaa kuliko wale nilikuwa nao mwanzo. Wale wa kitambo ulikuwa naenda kumwambia naomba 500 anakuambia hata mimi nilikuwa nikuombe. Sasa sasa hii wenye uko nao ni wenye ukimuomba hata anakutumia na kuambia anakutumia na yakutoa. We bless the Lord. The Lord has brought new friends. So wakati utaamua ku change itakuwa hard at the first but Mungu atakusaidia. E, tuliambiwa tukivaa nguo hizi tutakuwa wazee. I'm told I look young na kaa 22. I'm turning 27 tarehe 6 mwezi wengine sijezeeka sasa tunamaliza na wimbo eh sasa mimi natoka na wimbo kuna wimbo ni wimbo isingelikuwa msalaba wako inga hebu cheza hiyo isingelikuwa msalaba wako Ningelikuwa je Ningelikuwa Isingelikuwa Ni damu yako Ningelikuwa je Isingelikuwa Ni huruma zako Ningelikuwa je 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 If you feel you want to repent Just please repent We still have the time Before I hand the program back over Please please as we sing this song
Please as we sing this song. Tafadhali. Sijui mtakimbia mbele sijui what you do but just do what you do and repent. Because that day you will not run. It will be a dreadful day.
more time now. Because of time, wasababu ya wakati, I know you've repented. And we have told the Lord that we want to depopulate hell and enter in numbers in heaven. Please, brethren, I don't know much about you, but for me, I will struggle. Lakini kwangu mie nitatumika my prayer is ombi langu ni that if we don't meet again in Kakamega tusipokutana tena Kakamega that in heaven kwamba mbinguni if by chance you get to remember me greet me kama itatokea kwamba utanikumbuka unisalimie so we will struggle to end tutangangana tuingie and depopulate hell na tupunguze idadi jehanamu please let us not go back to sin tafadhali tusirudi kwa dhambi please 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 tafadhali 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 i want us to stand up now nataka tukasimame sasa i want us to stand up now nataka tusimame sasa and you will allow me to read you to Christ and then I will invite our mom to conclude by praying to us. Utaniruhusu niwaongoze tumpoke Kristo. Alafu nitamwalika mama yetu atuongee kwa mtu. I want us to lift our hands before the Lord. Nataka tuinue mikono yetu mbele za Bwana. And repeat this prayer. Na urudie ombi hili. Say dear Lord. Sema Bwana Yesu. Now we are going to repeat in a loud voice say mighty Jesus say my Jesus mku today leo i have heard about hell and heaven nimesikia kuhusu jehanamu na mbinguni and i'm choosing heaven na ninachagua mbinguni Please Jesus Tafadhali Yesu Write my name in the Lamb's book of life Andika jina langu kwa kitabu cha mwana kondoo cha uzima That when you come I'll be found worthy of entry kwamba utakaporudi nitakuwa mwenye kustahili kuingia Please help me to follow this highway of holiness Tafadhali nisaidie kufuata njia hii kuu ya utakatifu And help me to submit to this voice of Elijah Na unisaidie kujitisha kwa hii sauti ya Elia. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Nifunze njia zako ewe Bwana. Send me your Holy Spirit. Nitumie roho wako mtakatifu. To guide and direct my footsteps of salvation. Kuelekeza na kuongoza hatua zangu za wokovu. From today, kuanzia leo, I have rejected sin. Nimekata dhambi. And I have chosen righteousness and holiness. Na nimechagua uhaki na utakatifu. Please restore me Lord. Tafadhali unirejeshe Bwana. And keep me until the day will come for the church. Na unihifadhi hadi siku utakaporudi kuchukua kanisa lako. And today Lord Jesus I am born again. Na leo hii Bwana Yesu mimi nimeokoka. Somebody celebrate Jesus.